Pushing a trail drive is like moving a whole town that isn't sure it wants to be moved. Some of its people are willing, some aren't. You start out with problems, then you meet up with new ones. Whatever they are, however they happen, they have to be met. That's my job. Yo Favor's my name, Trail Boss. Bang marked. His neck's broke. Look here. Tracks bigger than the span of my hand. Puma, and an oversized one at that. Any idea which way you took off? Any more tracks? Well, they're up there away ahead of Moss Bed, but they're not as clear as these. Something must have scared him before he had time to finish up on the steer. He'll be back then. We'll keep the herd out in the open tonight. Nobody sleeps. How do you get the wagon? We use the carcass for bait. Right. Worse than a snake. Black hearted as night. Quicker than a rattler and twice as deadly. Put the poison on, oh, Mushy. Yes, sir, Mr. Wishbone. Sure like to get my hands on that cat. Any of you men ever eat puma pahia? Puma what? Pahia. Ah, oh, there's a delicacy. You lay on a slice of puma steak, and then you garnish with a layer of onions, and then a layer of clams. Clams? Oh, that's right, clams. And then another layer of puma steak and a layer of vegetables. And then you pour on some good liquor and let it simmer for six hours and steam through. Where are you going to get clams? Just one of you get me the puma and I'll dig up the clams. Oh, you're really funny, Wishbone. There's one thing about wolves and coyotes, you can hear them. But a puma, they're deadly quiet. Unless you're close enough to hear one of them purr. Her, like a kitten? Oh, shut up. No, Mushy, not like a kitten. Well, those tracks make that cat bigger than any I've ever even heard about. He that big, he could just about chew up the herd all by himself. Now, keep an eye open. He could be coming out of a hundred different places disappear the same way. I guess we're only lucky that uh, the cattle didn't catch us in. Oh, well, right now, the wind's blowing away from the herd. If any of you spot the cat, make sure you got a clean shot at it. A good chance to kill it. We don't want a wounded puma running loose. Now, grab your... Junk poison meat from wishbone. Move out. Thank <laughs> you. 
Got off one shot, he swiped back. I had to take off. We get you to wishbone quick, huh? Maybe we get him to part with some of that whiskey for medicinal purposes. Infection ain't got a chance against that stuff. I wonder if I have. Hand me a pair of scissors, Mushy. Mushy! I'll be branded with a cold iron if he ain't drunk from the fumes. Take him on out and give him some air. a lot of blood, Mr. Favor. How are you feeling? No worse than Mushy's gonna feel. Well, this stuff ain't bad taking internal, neither. Hey, you're working. I'm the patient. <sighs> hey, now you stay put. Traipsing around outside ain't gonna do you any good. Out there, he's trying to hold the prairie down. Says it keeps rising up on him. That ain't all that's gonna be rising up on him. Boss, all right? Not as all right as he thinks. It ain't serious, but what with the blood he's lost and the pummeling that puma gave him. Hey, how's the grazing around here? Well, it's fair. It might be a good time to fat up the cattle a day or two. No, no, Mr. Fair wouldn't like it if we uh, didn't keep the herd moving. Now, who's the doctor, me or Mr. Favor? Well, neither one of you are. You want Mr. Favor to come down with gangrene? Gangrene? Oh, well, you're the doctor, Wish. Well, in that case, graze the cat. Yeah. Seen him matter. And you, Roddy. And me? Yep. Seeing it was you who decided to hold up the drive for two whole days. I, I didn't do that. That was your decision. That ain't the way I told it. Well, I gotta change his bandage. Even if I do something wrong, I get blamed for it, even if I don't do it? Well, you might as well get used to it. That's something that always happens to the trail bosses. Well, I ain't no trouble. She will be someday if Mr. Favor's right, and he usually is. I ain't seen a carriage like that since that time I was in Mexico City. Oh. That one looks like it's been driven all the way from there without stopping. Yeah, she is. Wonder what she's doing out here. I don't know. Why don't you go ask her? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, that's a good idea, Pete. I'll go with you. Hello. Uh, my name's Rowdy Yates. I'm Pete Nolan. I am Margarita Colinas. Did one of you shoot a puma two days ago? Yeah, that's right. 
You? Uh, no, not me. I would like very much to meet the man who did. For any particular reason? I wish to thank him. Well, you wait here for a minute, and I'll go get him for you. Please. Why ain't the herd moving? Well? Well, uh, I decided to graze him for two days. You decided? The lady out here would like to see you, boss. Where? Right out here. Mr. Favor, Miss... Uh... Senora Colinas. How do you do, Senora Colinas? You are the one who wounded the puma. Mm, I shot a puma. I'm not sure whether I... Killed it or not. I'm afraid that's right. Why did you not go after it and make sure? Well, he would have, uh, Miss, uh, Senora, but uh, he got pretty well pawed up there. He looks all right. My son did, too. Your son? His name was Fernando Colinas. He was nine years old. Two days ago, he was killed. A wounded puma, unable to seek its natural prey, stalked my boy. Stalked him, caught him, killed him. Deeply sorry, senor. We, uh, we couldn't track the cat down either before or after we shot it. Miss Kalina, sir. Couldn't the men on your place have... My men? That is my man. Does he look like a hunter to you? Nope. What about your husband? Dead. Sorry. And your neighbors? Fifty miles away. What do you want, Mrs. Colinas? I want my boy. You have many things here. Cattle, horses, men. One thing you do not have. Fernando. Who is dead. Who I buried myself. I'll go now. I have what I came for. Sight of the coward who wounded the puma and would not kill it. Senor. The cat was attacking our herd. We, we had to try and stop it. You need not worry, Mr. Favor. Now that it is wounded, the animal will no longer follow your herd. It has closer and easier prey. Theo Ramos. What did you mean? I have two other children. Younger. Less able to run from the wounded puma. But you need not concern yourself. You and the herd will move on. You will be safe. Wounding the puma was an easy way for you. The animal will no longer be able to follow your herd. And you do not have the time to make sure it is dead. Oh, I didn't mean to wound it. I, I tried to kill it. For that, maybe someone above me will forgive you. But not I. Boss? Hmm? No. Boss, you gotta quit thinking about this thing. I know you're worried about that family and they keep getting all torn up and all, but the most important thing is getting this herd through. That's what you've always told me, isn't it? Cat mauled me pretty good. What chance the little boy have? You didn't bring the cat in this area. Besides, you, you tried to kill it. Come darn close to killing you. Did kill the boy. Yeah. Well, there's nothing we can do about that now. Maybe. Something I can try to do about it, though. You're in charge of the herd. I'll be gone a couple, three days. Maybe more. 
Back there alone? You taking any of the hands with you, Mr. Favor? Uh, no reason why you should. Ain't any of them mountain men. Well, Mr. Wishbone says if Mr. Favor's got worn out the brain, he wouldn't go off hunting a mountain lion without a mountain man to help him track it down. Mushy, you got a worse tongue than a drunken drover, which you'll never be. Drover, that is. So, uh, that's what Mr. Wishbone says, huh? Well, maybe he said something. I mean, maybe I said something like... I'm sure you did. Mushy, you can tell Mr. Wishbone that, uh, Mr. Favor's got one ounce of brains left anyway. Visit Miss Kalinas, boss? Whatever she knows about the Pumas habits, it'd help. You ain't fooling me. Come on, let's go see if the other kids are all right. What do you want here? We're going after the Puma. You want the Senora's blessing? I want to learn whatever I can from her, or from you, that will help us find the cat. Perhaps it heals now, and you can wound it again. Well, what we don't want is any mouth from you, old man. Your beard is gray from extreme youthfulness. Now, you never mind my beard. Wishbone. Mrs. Kulinas? Why did you come here? Do you not have your cattle to look after? I have to ask some questions. That's why I came. Answering them won't be easy for you, I know, but I must ask them. What are you going to ask? How did my boy die? Did he speak to me before he died? No, he did not. When they brought him to me, he could no longer speak. Who brought him to you? Where did they find him? I found him. A little way off the arroyo. As far as you can throw a stone. We'll stay until we find the puma and kill it. Will that bring Fernando back to life? No. If I were a man, I would kill you. Would that bring Fernando back to life? I need to know where the puma hunts. It is almost night. We'll start in the morning. I am not a man, and I am Spanish. You are on my land, and I must ask you into my house. You've asked. No, thank you. We'll camp out. Mr. Favor? Must you shame me? We'll be glad to stay the night, Mrs. Colinas. Time for bed, niños. How tall are you? Six four. That's pretty tall. Fair. When I grow up, will I be as tall as you? Now, let's see. You very well might be. You are good with children. Well, I've got two of my own, little girls. Just about their age, too. They travel with you in the herd? Oh, no, they're back east. With your wife? No. You uh, were on a trail drive, you'd be skinned alive for taking so long to obey orders. Your mother ordered you to bed. Vamos. Is Mr. Fay? 
favor, handsome mama? Carlotta. Oh, I shouldn't have said that till we were outside. What are you grinning at? Who's grinning? Hey, what kind of hunting have you got on your mind? I can't sleep, Mama. And why can't you sleep? Where's Pablo? 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 fond of him? He's opinionated, stubborn, sometimes even pretty stupid. But you're right. I'm fond of him. Been alone a long time, haven't you? No. I've had the children, and Pedrillo, their grandfather. Isn't that being alone? My husband died four years ago. And that's a long time. What of the mother of your little girls? She's been gone a little longer than four years. Do you not think about her? Do you not feel a little lonely yourself? Trail boss doesn't have much time to think about being lonely. But there must be times when even a man in charge of a herd would... Here, let me take that. That bandage should be changed. Yes, it should. Have you been the last week, senor? I got a ranch to run, youngster. <laughs> you are never here when you're needed. You treat me polite, Padrillo. If you don't, when the senora marries me, I'll fire you. <laughs> what do you mean, when I'm needed? When was I needed? It was the puma. What puma? What happened? A wounded puma that someone failed to kill. Anything happened to Margarita? Fernando. It killed Fernando. Fernando? He was going to be my oldest. I'd give everything I own to get my hands on the man wounded that puma. It was a trail boss of the herd that went through. Herds move slow. Come on, Flint, we'll catch up with them. That will not be necessary. I want to meet that herd boss. He is not with his herd. Well, where is he? Hello, Margarita. Ben. I'm looking for a trail boss. Maybe you. Maybe me. My name's Ben Teagle. You and me are going outside. I'm gonna kill you. Ben, no. Better make sure the kids are asleep. I came here to kill a puma, Mr. Teagle. That's all I came here for. That ain't gonna do you no good. Don't raise that gun no higher, mister. The strain might kill you. <laughs> Puma's mighty close. Yeah, thanks to you.
You ain't put that gun away yet, mister. Tomas is outside. His dog ran away. He's looking for it. You take the front. I'll take the back. You come in the back. Tomas! Tomas! Tomas, where are you? Here! On the rock! On the rock! Go around that way. Tomas! Tomas, when I throw this rock, the puma comes after me. You climb down and run home. You understand? Yes, I do. It's all right, Tomas. You can come on down now. Say... Now, that was real smart of you to climb up in the rocks here. Where's Pablo? Mr. Favor. Tomas, I'll get you another dog. I promise. He is asleep. Thank you for what you did. I was terribly unfair to you. No need to apologize. You could have gone on with the herd, forgotten about what happened here. No. That is why I apologized. It's time we got started. We'll pick up the trail where we found it last night. Mr. Favor. I'm going with you. Why? I know the country hereabouts better than you do. We're both after the same thing, ain't we? The cat? Too many men will make the animal take to hide. Three too many? Nope. Mr. Favor. You will return. When the puma's dead. You stay here. Keep an eye on the children. Yes, sir. It's none of my business, Mr. Table. Go on, make it your business. Well, there's two of them. Makes the odds just about fair, don't it? Senor? The puma is a dangerous animal to hunt. But there is one animal even more dangerous. Hmm? What's that? The man who hunts with you. Maybe so. I tried to warn him, senora. Say, just say. I'd say that's where he's heading. The tracks? Disappeared. But hills like that's where a mountain cat would hold up during the day. Deagle? Man sounds like he knows what he's talking about. Mount up, Wishbone.
Pick up anything? I just been talking to Mr. Favor. He don't think we're ever gonna find that puma this way. What does he think? We need more men. Well, I don't see none handy. That's why he wants you to ride back to the ranch. Get Flint to go over to my place and come back with a dozen hands. Oh, that makes sense. Where is Mr. Favor? He's gone up ahead. I'll join him. It's funny he wouldn't come and tell me himself. He didn't want to waste any time. You know him better than me. It'll be night time you get back. We'll have a fire going, make it easy to find us. Uh, that it will. Well, I hope you don't catch that cat before I get back. I'd sure hate to miss being in on the kill. Yeah, that, um, that'd be a shame. Anything up above? Where's Wishbone? He thinks the cat headed for higher ground. He's waiting till we get through with the ravine. <laughs> He's no kid. Made a good excuse for him to sit down for a while. Mr. Favor, how much of this are you doing for the kids and how much for Margarita? Does it uh, make a difference? No difference. Thought I'd ask, that's all. Mr. Favor! I can see the whole ravine. There's nothing down there. Well, come on up, then. You know something? It's not the safest thing in the world to be right in front of a man with a drawn gun and the hammer back. I didn't follow your orders today, Mr. Favor. No, no, not at all. Why? Well, the way I saw it, the time I got back with all those men you wanted, that cat could have been clean out of Texas. Maybe so, maybe so. What's your opinion, Tigo? I ain't got one. All I want is to see that puma dead. That's all any of us want. Way high up in the Mogley Hills, on the mountain tops, a lion picked the yearling's bones and licked his thankful chops. Not with that yelling going on, he didn't. A lion picked the yearling's bones. It's a good thing ain't any of us yearlings, right, Mr. Teagle? Those are cat tracks. The way he's traveling looks like he's favoring a paw. Well, ain't a man alive can see through rock. <clears throat> Break it? No, it ain't broken. But I sure wish you'd listen to me before it tried what it tried. You'll have to stay here then. Now I can come along. Just give me time to cut myself a crutch. You stay put. We're not back by night. You build a fire. You're lucky, old timer. You could have broken your neck. Oh, 
watch out for that cat. An animal like that can be sneaky. I'd like to get you from behind. I'll watch out, all right. Come on, Deagle. Wishbone hadn't showed up. You pulled the trigger? I don't know. You ever shoot a man in the back? Nope. Don't mean I wouldn't. Well, that's something to know. Come on. Must be Goldie's place. Who? Hmm? Uh, you know how legends are, Mr. Favor. If kids, women, old men talk something up, after a while, everybody half accepts it and eventually believes it. Get to the point, Eagle. Well, the one who lives in there, or supposed to live there, they call him Goldie. To be alive, he must be over a century. Hard to believe, ain't it? And live to be a hundred? What's in there you don't want to be in there? A whole lot, Mr. Favor. A man who's lived a full century, isn't that enough? A man who brought his young bride up here and killed her because he found gold. And she wanted to use it. And he knew if she did, he'd lose it to the young man who wanted to help her spend it. Some people say I want Margarita for what she owns. And like the old man they say lives in there. I got gold of my own in a sense. I can pay for anything she names, but she never named you. Now, that's up to her, ain't it? Nobody ever paid much attention to old Goldie and his legends, because uh, up here's the wrong place for gold veins. The puma tracks are here anyway. Let's go, Mr. Favor. I never believed in the stories about old Goldie anyway. Let's find out if he's real. You two strayed from the beaten trail, as she used to be called. Not exactly. We were hunting for a puma. This one's a man killer. More power to him. Seen any sign of him around? I ain't got no quarrel with pumas. Got no quarrel with nothing. I ain't human. What's in there? No. Nobody goes in there. All we want is the cat, Goldie. What's in there belongs to me, understand? Why do you call me Goldie? It's stupid to call me Goldie. You and them other fellas, many years ago, there was no gold in there. She found that out. Then you won't let us in after the puma? Glad the puma got in there. He's a friend of mine. You think I'm so old I can't defend a friend of mine? He's just knocked out. He'll come around. Crazy old loon. You better stay here and keep an eye on him. I'll go up to the camp. Well, both go.
That ain't out here. Deeper in. I don't like being shut in. I don't like it, but I'm gonna be the one who gets that tumor. Been shift? Yeah. I thought we were deeper down than that. Try to get across the same way the cat did. He might have jumped it. Uh, not even the cat could get across that. Yeah, I haven't tried it. You might not get across. It'd be an accident. Ain't nobody to say it wasn't. It'd be an accident. What makes you so sure? And uh, what makes you so sure that it wouldn't be an accident? Choices, ain't I? Watching you going, coming back. All right then, Teagle. This is when you do it. You love a woman. You're so afraid you can't have her. You're ready to kill the first man who comes along, looks at her twice. All right then, this is when you do it. I fall so far, they don't even look for me. You are ready? I got a step here. It's all for you. Here goes. You stay there all day, how am I gonna get across? He's gone as far as he can. Let me take him. I'll cover him. Try it again. Want to find out how deep this shaft is? Want to find out how good my aim is? It's no use in that light. We gotta wait till darkness. When it gets dark, you'll need a torch to get across, and that's all the light I need. So go on, get on with it, move. Then stay there, you can't stand it any longer. I got patience. I can wait longer than you can. If one of us could make it, could get a drop on that old loan. Hey, look, it's clear. Get back. Hey, you planning on sparing the summer down there? I don't know who this 
guess old Methuselah is, but he sure didn't want you out of there. Say, Wishbone, didn't I tell you to stay put down below? You mighty well did. Don't you ever listen to anything I say? Well, aren't you glad I did? You mighty well told I am. Uh... What do we do with them now? Hmm. Yeah. Unload them again. <sighs> Oh, Tammy, you uh, look like you use some clothes. You don't look like you've had a meal in the last 10 years, either. If we get down below, we'll send you up some food and stuff. Hey! You send anybody up here, I'll... I'll blow their brains out. Next town we hit, I'm gonna get you the finest dog they got and send him on back for you. All right? Mama, he is handsome. It was Mr. Deagle who shot the puma, though. Oh, Mr. Favor, you did return, but now? I'm behind my herd. Is that so important? Trail boss is no good for a woman and children. I've been through that once. Shouldn't the woman have something to say? Good luck on your drive, Mr. Favor. Goodbye. Gracias. Go with God, ancient one. Don't you worry about me, child. Protect us from the wind. Well, I guarantee you it'll cost you. There never was a man like Matt Webster for squeezing a dime. When a man has what you want, you gotta pay. Yeah. I'd like to talk to Mr. Webster. Yeah. The boss of your outfit? Uh, I'd like to have a powwow with your chief. All right, Siloti. He's not from Lower Town. Oh, uh, ma'am, uh, name's Yates. I got a herd up on the high ground. I kind of uh, want to talk to Mr. Webster. The answer's no, Mr. Yates. Well, if you don't mind, I'd like to talk to Mr. Webster. My husband died three years ago. Oh, well, do um, you mind if I explain my problem to whoever you got There's running? There's nothing to explain. Look, Mrs. Webster, if I can't bed my herd down on your property, I'm going to have to double back to Dutch Flat. And I'm short on rations now. If you've got any fee you'd want, I'd gladly pay it. Look, Mr. Yates, I don't want your money. And I don't want your herd or your men anywhere near Broken Bluff. Is that clear enough? They got four or five days to get around, heading right into the teeth of that wind. Yeah, well, there's no way around it, being as we can't cross the Webster land. Can we lay over here until that northern passes? Not much protection, but it's better than heading into the wind on a gully stretch like this. Well, if we start off now, we'll be running on half rations. If we lay over a day or two, well, we'll be down to thirds. Can we pick up some supplies in Broken Bluff? Tell you about this town of Broken Bluff. Well, the upper part is strictly a Sunday go to meeting outfit. The lower part is made up of sawmill hands and miners. And believe me, both hands, they've, they've got as much use for a drover as a long-tailed cat has for a rocking chair. <laughs> Well, we're just going to have to figure out some... Yeah, it looks like a committee comes to make sure we don't even come close to their precious little town. Are they 
get this straight, you want us to lay over for two days, huh? That's right. You don't seem to understand this, uh, these supplies I was talking about. Uh, I'm a little short on cash. No problem, Mr. Yates. Besides being mayor of the town, I also own the Broken Bluff General Store. Uh, how much extra do I have to pay for this easy credit? All we're asking is that you lay over for two days. The thing is, uh, if you want those supplies, you gotta lay over until after election time. Oh, what uh, Talbot means is we'd appreciate it if you and your men kinda joined in. Join in how? Uh, so long as your men are inside the county line, they have the right to vote. That's the law. Now, how many drovers you got with you this time? Uh, 23, you know. What's this election about? Yeah, There's a bunch of women making up a big fuss about getting the vote. Yeah, so they can close down every gambling table, saloon, and dance hall in Lower Town. But a vote for the present administration means a vote for free drinking men, free thinking women, and free turning faro wheels. Hey, hey, a proper place, of course. Hey, hey. <laughs> and I can figure on your casting a vote for democracy and liberty? If, uh, if this election doesn't turn out your way, then it's no supplies, though, hmm? Well, what uh, Talbot here means... I think is... Yates gets my meaning clear enough. No votes, no supplies. You ain't for women voting, are you? Yeah, I never thought about that. Why, well, it ever come to that, it'd be ruination. And you won't mind staying over a day just for a good cause. <laughs> well, we see your men don't mind the wait. Free beer for all the drovers. Yeah. Yeah. Starting as soon as you line up for it, right, Talbot? Sure. See you in town, Mr. Yates? Yeah, we'll be there. That free beer was a magic word. <laughs> Beer and the glad hand don't work. There's other ways. And I'll use them. Not that way. You was with me when I talked to the drovers. What's gonna make them change their minds? <laughs> well, maybe the crazy women in this town. Cassie Webster, for one. Mrs. Webster, you mean? All right, Mrs. Webster. Oh, I know my place. But maybe Mrs. Webster and all the rest of them long-nosed females from Upper Town ought to remember theirs. The only women those drovers are likely to get interested in are the kind they find in your saloons. I hope you're right. Beer all set out for them? Six kegs. Lined up inside the Applejack. Oh, that's what I call a right nice looking town. Very good I go. Oh, that's Lower Town. I see now why they call it Broken Bluff. Yeah, half the people. Half the prairie dogs and drovers. Welcome, boys. Be set up for you. Right over there in the apple deck. Sheriff get to. Just let me handle it. Now, Cassie, please. You're in my way, Mr. Thorner. Of course, you could have your city council throw us in jail again for not having a permit. I didn't put you in jail, Cassie. Then you'll let us pass? All right. March your full heads off. let you handle it. I don't notice you doing anything about that female bartender of yours with a bass drum. Why don't you fire her? You think I want my saloons chopped up for a kindling? Tell me, they do this often? Two or three times a day. What do they want to vote for? To put me out of business, that's what for. Cassie Webster put him up to it. She's the widow of the biggest rancher we had around these parts. Since her husband died, seems like she's got nothing else to do but make trouble. Of course, this is a democracy. They got the right to their opinions. Opinions? They win themselves this election. You won't be mayor no more, much less get yourself sent to the state capitol. 
Leave it to a bunch of high uh, button look, females. Look, Mr. Yates, don't want to hear about our problems. That's right, I don't. I'm only interested in getting my herd moving. Here's that list of supplies I told you about. Oh, fine. Hey. Time enough for business tomorrow. After the election. Oh, sure, right. See you later. Maybe you ought to see about putting out some extra beer. <laughs> I've looked in every saloon in town. I can't find her nowhere. Who are you looking for? Oh, that uh, lady bartender everybody's been talking about. Mm. Well, she's probably pounding a drum out there in that parade. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you're too young to be drinking all by yourself. Ah. Ah. Afternoon, ma'am. All right, ladies. Get busy. Uh, I'd like to stay out of their way if I were you. a little bit of misunderstanding, that's all. These drovers are our guests now. We don't want to give them the wrong idea about our little town, do we? Well, you just see that Cassie Webster and them crazy hatchet women of hers don't give them the wrong idea. Then you can take all of this out of next month's taxes. All right, Bill. Carol, Sue, you going home. Yeah. I'm sorry, Cassie. For what? I've told you, you asked for it, marching down here into Lower Town after I warned you. No woman has to ask for brutality from a man. Cassie, if you don't even get these crazy notions out of your head. Well, I happen to think they're not crazy. Women pay taxes, but they can't vote. Do these drovers pay any taxes? Yeah. I'm going to get Tower to get some more beer out. I suppose I ought to thank you. Well, you don't have to if you don't want. I don't want to be obligated. You're not. I'd have done the same thing for any woman who was being pushed around. Well, then you've been kept pretty busy, Mr. Yates, because women have been pushed around ever since time began. Yeah, well, I haven't been around that long. Tell me, you think getting the vote's going to take care of all this? I think it's a start. You see, we got to make people realize we mean it. That's why we go around beating drums and parading and, and breaking up beer kegs. Then I, I guess you don't agree with that, do you? No. I think breaking up those kegs is a terrible waste of good beer. Beeves are spooking up real bad. Ah, oh, well, we better head back to the herd. Break the game up, fellas. All right, boys, let's go. Hold on, let's set them up. We'll rustle them back to the herd. What? Hustle them and wrestle them. That's you too, Wisdom. What are you talking on. about? I realize your country isn't like that. Right. Well, there's only one thing left to do, Roddy, and that's bed them down in Webster's Canyon. That's what we're going to do, Jim, whether Cassie Webster likes it or not. But there's free lunch. Mm. Next time. <laughs> early for a social visit, isn't it, Mrs. Webster? This is no social visit, Mr. Yates. Mr. Thorner tells me that uh, you and your drovers are planning to vote in our election tomorrow. Have you ever known Thorner to be a liar? Now, there are a lot of things about Mike Thorner I don't like, but he's no liar. Uh, then me and my boys are going to vote in your election tomorrow. Why, Mr. Yates? you got nothing to do with Broken Bluff. doesn't matter to you what happens around there. Why are you going to vote? 
Well, because I promised Thorner we would, that's why. The mayor of your town, the laws of this state say we can vote, so we will. So it doesn't matter if, uh, if somebody's a stranger, a saddle bum, a drunk. Just so long as he wears pants, that gives him the right to vote. Just so long as he's an all-conquering male, is that it? Yeah, well, that's the way it is all over the country. In Wyoming, women vote. This isn't Wyoming, is it? And one of these days, women all over the United States are going to have the right to vote. Well, let me tell you, when that day comes, I hope you cast your vote for whoever you like. In the meantime, I've got to get the herd moving through the pass before nightfall. So I can't change your mind, Mr. Yates? You're going to be so stubborn that nothing I can say is going to make any difference? I'm no more stubborn than the next man. You're always telling everybody what you want them to do. You might try asking for a change. i got to get my herd moved out. All right, nobody told anybody to quit. Let's get the herd moving out. I suppose if I had free kegs of beer to pass out, things would be different, wouldn't it? You got something against beer? No, just when it's used to buy votes. See, Thornton's brand on me, is that it? But if I offered to buy your votes for female suffrage... Oh, yeah? No. Oh, well, that's good, because you couldn't do it. Well, I can stop you from staying over on my land long enough to vote. Not without an army, you couldn't. Well, I'll get an army. Ms. Webster and her committee just come back from the trail camp. They don't look too pleased. I guess they didn't get far with the drovers. Cassie Webster better start giving up. I told you her name is Mrs. I know Mrs. Webster. I knew old man Webster left her a lot of money when he died, but I didn't know he left her that much. Talbot, you can stop that kind of talk right now. I admire Mrs. Webster, even if I think she's crazy about this voting business. Well, don't let your admiration carry you too far. Look, if them women win this election, they're going to put me out of business. And I've worked too long and too hard to let that happen. I understand. You don't even begin to understand. If they shut down Lower Town, the gambling and all the rest, I'm just a saddle bum, not worth the time to run out of town. I'm willing to do all I can. All right. Now, you and Cassie, I mean Mrs. Webster, they're pretty friendly. Now, you go talk to her. You go out there and talk her into... Uh, calling this whole suffragette business off. Well, we ain't that friendly. Now, it just may take you a little time to get her to change her mind. You ain't gonna do it sitting here. Jerry, why don't you go on back to your jail before somebody steals it from you? change your mind for her, maybe he won't. But if he don't, we got trouble. Them suffragettes got enough votes from the respectable men in this town to put their own people into office. And before that happens, we're gonna vote every grave in Boot Hill. We're gonna make sure them drovers vote the right way, even if we have to use guns to show them the right way. And maybe, just maybe, we might have to put a few bullets in a few people. That would be a crying shame. Let's hope Mr. Thorner changes her mind for her. Cassie, I'm telling you this for your own good. How do you know what my good is, Mike? You're young. You're pretty. Well, you could be if you wanted to. Instead of running around with a bunch of crazy women yelling for the vote, you could... Well, you could, uh... Could what, Mike? Get married again? Now, why? Oh... That's what every woman wants. Not every woman. Especially those that have been married. That don't prove anything. Jake Webster shouldn't have got married in the first place. He was too old, too set in his ways. Oh, he was a real man, he was. He knew what he wanted and he took it. Isn't that what you admire? You weren't happy with him. 
That don't mean you can't be happy with somebody else. Like who? Like me. If you was married to me, you, you wouldn't have no time for such nonsense as parading around a man in the vote. Such nonsense. I've heard that before. I've heard that so many times before. Tell me, did you ever know that a, that a child's heart could break over a little rag doll? Or that a woman could live in the same house with a man for six years, six long years, and still be lonely? What are you talking about? Just nonsense. Cassie, you really ought to listen to me. Votes for women, Mr. Thorner. Oh, believe you me, I'll parade today and tonight and tomorrow. I may even beat that big drum. I'm glad you came to see me, though. I found out you want to be mayor again so bad you're even willing to marry me. Smell that norther blowing up. You smell something else. Beside the norther, I mean. Smoke, maybe. Smoke? Yeah, but I don't see it. Look there. Well, it ain't no prairie fire. Somebody's trail camp? Well, maybe. We better turn that herd before they get a whiff of that smoke. They smelled it already, Jim. <laughs> Up ahead. We smelled it. We had a time keeping them from stampeding. I don't see any smoke. Now you can't see it from here. But there's something burning up there. Uh, better go take a look. Simon, stay with the herd. Quincy, yeah? Yeah. Females of mine telling me what you're doing here? Handing our cooking car. Yeah, for what? For that army you told me to organize. Don't see any food around to cook, just smoke. Well, do you know we forgot the food? Now, wasn't that foolish of us? But then, of course, you can't expect anything much better out of women. Well, using this green wood is what's causing all the smoke, isn't that right? I know, it's just terrible, isn't it? Look, there's a norther blowing up, and I gotta get this herd to low ground before it hits. It's either that or head back for Dutch Flat, which means... Which means you won't have any time to vote tomorrow, doesn't it? You or your men. I'm taking this herd through the pass. Well, now, is anybody stopping you, Mr. Yates? Well, this smoke's getting the bees a little edgy. Probably start a stampede. Oh. Now, do you want to put it out, or do we? I'm not about to put that fire out, Mr. Yates. Bell? You better put some more wood on that cook fire. All right, all right. You win for now. We'll bed the herd down where it is, but we're going to bring it through tomorrow. Smoke or no smoke, or women or no women, we're coming through. Not unless you're willing to drive them over us. 
You've been talking about women being pushed around all their lives. But you've been doing an awful lot of pushing around yourself to get what you want. That election tomorrow on Broken Bluff concerns me. I'm going to be in there voting, me and my men. <laughs> You know, um, Cassie was kind of fibbing. We got food back in the rocks. <laughs> well, you look terrible undernourished. I tell you what you do. You sneak out of camp tonight, and you come on down here, and I'll put some fat on your bones. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Miss... Uh... Uh, Mrs. It's Mrs. Connolly. Well, thank you, Mrs. Connolly. <laughs> Go ahead. You can call me Belle. My husband wouldn't mind. Oh, really? <laughs> no. He's been dead ten years. <laughs> <laughs> they were starving you. <laughs> well, it's not quite true, actually. It's just that I've got such an enormous appetite. Well, I know you wouldn't think so to look at me, but I can't get enough to eat. Thank you. Yeah. These are delicious. <sighs> do you know, back home in England, tea and crumpets was always my... <gasps> Watch your language. What do you mean? Well, I've been a lady bartender for ten years now, and I know what crumpets are. <laughs> You know, that's the way this country looked when the first human came here. That's the way it's gonna look when the last of us goes. Are you worried about it, Mrs. Webster? Don't call me Mrs. Webster. I hate that name. I'm sorry. Call me Cassie. Cassie. You know, I was 18 when my parents married me to Jake Webster. He was 50. Oh, it was a good match. He was very rich. No, it wasn't. It wasn't good at all. I was too young to understand myself, or even him, I suppose. But I cried when he died. It was expected of me. Yet underneath it all, I think I was... I don't know. Relieved? That's not too uncommon, I see her. You know, I had a... a kind of a stepmother once. She never beat me or anything like that, but she uh, never said two decent words in the whole time we were around each other. Well, she finally took fever and passed away. I had to feel sad about it, but it's impossible. So I just ended up feeling... Relieved? Yeah, I guess that's it. That's how it was with me for so long. I don't know why I'm telling you all this, Mr. Yates. I guess it's because right now it seems like we're the only two people in the whole world. Mr. Yates is uh, all right, but Rowdy'd be a little friendly, don't you think? All right, Rowdy. Rowdy. Rowdy Yates. You know, 
you keep saying that over and over, and after a while, it doesn't make any sense at all. You're the prettiest suffragette I ever saw. You don't understand, do you? No, I guess not. Well, I guess I started out being a suffragette because I wanted to get revenge on men. Because my own marriage had been so miserable. But you know, well, now it's something more than that. You see, the right to vote would give women dignity. It'd make persons of them in their own right. And you think that solves everything, don't you? Mm -hmm. Just like every other man. I don't think anything right now. But it doesn't, you know. It doesn't really solve anything at all. You're still not moving your herd through that pass. Well, look here, Roddy. I'm almost old enough to be your father. Oh, <laughs> fortunately, you ain't. Well, of course not. I'm a bachelor, and it wouldn't look right for you to have a bachelor for a father. But what I'm getting at is, are you going to let these women hold us up? Well, I'm afraid they already have. Besides, I'm not too sure they're not right. If Providence had wanted women folk to have the vote, it would have... Would have what? Hmm? Well, made them more like men, I guess. Women are still in the past. Oh, no lady bartender, though. Enough of them to get in the way if we try to run the beeves through. Oh, we can't do that. Yeah. Why not? Once those beeves start coming through there, those women will scatter faster and you can say, votes for women. I suppose they don't. Well, nobody be that stupid. Well, maybe the women would. Oh. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to ride in town. Well, that isn't going to get anybody out of anybody's way. Well, as a sheriff in Broken Bluff, he might be able to do something. You didn't finish your breakfast. You sick or something? Well, I don't feel too good. Maybe it was something I ate. This ain't part of Broken Bluff, Mr. Yates. I got no right to arrest nobody out there. You mean you got no intention of arresting anybody out there? Look, Mr. Thorner, you still want us to vote against that suffragette business? I feel the same way I always did. You sure ain't acting the same way. Yates, you want them supplies? You be sure and vote the way you said. Yeah. My first job is to get that herd through the pass, though. After that, my men and I might not have time to vote. Um, Cassie Webster's heading out for the ranch. Getting provisions for those women blocking your path. If you want to save time, you can talk her out of it. Ranch is a mile out of town, heading north. Cassie won't listen to him. He might. Won't he did to me. Voting's begun. I know that. Sherry, you ought to be over at the barber shop. Seeing that nobody votes that ain't entitled to. Well, you've done a good bit of talking. Talking that ain't accomplished a thing. What do you want me to do? Nothing. I'm taking over. What? The talking? The doing. Where are you going? Well, the best and the fastest way to kill a snake is lopping its head off. You stay away from Cassie. Now, she used to get her barns burned down and her stock run off. Well, I figure she might uh, stop worrying about votes for women. You figure the same way? I don't like it. Take your hands off. Now, you listen to me. I'm done listening. You're not going any place to hear me. Not Not 
doing what you think you are. You gonna try and stop me? Oh, it's just that if we don't get the herd through the pass, the men are gonna have an awful lot of time on our hands. Time enough to vote. What about the Norther? Oh, that's all dying out. However, I could, uh, I could let them think that they've got to stay with the herd and keep working until after the voting's over with. You mean that? Well, people get their feelings going, they don't often think straight. I know. Ooh, how about that? You complaining? No, no, it just wasn't long enough, that's all. front. No, Who's out there? I is Mike Thorner with him? No, I don't think so. Looks like Talbot and a few of his boys. If they start rushing the house, we're in trouble. Drover's in there with a gun. We'll pick you off. Not before I get you. ask you to come here. On account of you, I killed a man out there. I suppose it'd been better if you'd killed a woman. They don't really count, do they? Like killing puppies nobody wants, or a gopher's eating your crops. Shut up. That man you shot, the one you're crying about, was trying to kill me. Why don't you help him? Take it easy now. like a wild animal. What are you trying to do, kill him? Well, he swung on me. That didn't make any difference. Well, he started the fight. You saw it. Well, he has his pride. He was ashamed of hitting me. Mike, are you all right? All right. Cassie, I've been wrong about so many things, I can't begin to tell you. There's one thing I got. I thought a woman asking for the vote wasn't a real woman. Didn't have the same feelings or wants or... Cassie, will you marry me? Oh, Mike, of course I will. <laughs>
very sweet of you. Thank you. Hey, crumpets. Popovers. Popovers. Thank you very much. Bye-bye now. Bye. What are you staring at? Oh, I ain't never seen a lady bartender before. Well, now that you have. I like them. Ma'am? <laughs> oh, it's real nice of you all to write out and say goodbye. We owe you our vote. After all, if your men hadn't voted in favor of woman suffrage, well, I guess some of us even owe you more than that. Well, I'm one didn't vote for this suffrage business, and I'll mighty well tell you why. Because if this thing grows in another 50 years, this country just won't be fit to live in. The cowhand's hat is the first thing he puts on when he gets up, and the last thing he takes off when he beds down. In summer, the wide brim shades his eyes from the sun. In winter, he pulls the brim down, ties it over his ears to avoid frostbite. He uses the crown as a bucket and the brim as a drinking cup. That's why a cow hand will get the best hat he can. Because it's got to serve a dozen purposes its maker never dreamed of. The same thing goes for the men wearing the hats. I know, I'm Gil Faber, trail boss. both ways for about five miles. What'd you find? Nothing but hills, no way around them. This uh, is the shortcut. The one you said it'd lop off three days? Well, we did save about two days until... Uh-huh. Well, those hills would be fine for mountain goats. Only trouble is... We're not herding goats. <laughs> you heard that, huh? Any towns near here? The trail map says Mesa's about two hours ride down the flat. Yeah, graze the herd. Keep looking for a way through, though. I'll ask around in Mesa. What are they gonna do now? Must be a livery stable in town. Yeah, and a sheriff. I'm thinking of Sam Burton. Anybody remember him? It's been about 10 years. Maybe he won't remember us. Well, maybe he won't want to, but he will. The spread ain't more than a mile down the road. afraid you mightn't remember us. I remember you, Gaff. Is your wife with you and the boy? There you are. Boy'd be about uh, 16 now, wouldn't he? That's right. Where is he? Boy's in Mesa with his mother. They're shopping. I ain't got no money, Gaff. I get along, that's just about all. Oh, we don't want any money, Sam. That's what we want. I only got one saddle horse. One's all we need. All right. Why'd you come here? Or oh, his horse is lame. Lame horse can't keep up with a stagecoach, can it, Sam? But that's not what you wanted to know, is it? I'm sorry to hear you're not doing too well, Sam. I'm satisfied. You could do a lot better, a lot better, Sam. Twice a week, that San Antonio stagecoach comes through Mesa. 
Don't carry nothing but passengers. True. But what do the passengers care? Horse is ready. Sam isn't. Well, you got my horse, now why don't you get out of here? Sam, when we rode in here and let you take a look at us, that minute, you either gonna join up with us or die. I can't do you no good. Of course you can, Sam. You always thought fast when things got rough. Your house would make a nice, safe place to hold up. After we got what we're after. Well, uh, my kid don't know what I used to be. Now, don't get excited, Sam. Maury, he's a little emotional. He didn't really mean what he said. Did you, Maury? No. I'm very fond of you, Sam. You were an honest outlaw back in the old days. I could trust you. And somehow I... I feel that I can trust you now. Don't worry. I won't tell anyone about you. No, Sam, you won't. Don't do any good. <laughs> Who was he? Oh. My father. Well, he was already dead when I got here. There's somebody else that came from behind him. You better look after her. You're gonna shoot us too? you have me do? Improve on the truth to make a better story? You ain't believing him, are you, Mr. Wilson? I'm holding him for trial, son. He ought to hang. That's for a jury to decide. He didn't wait for a jury before killing Paul. You better take your mother home, boy. Going home, Ma. Yes. Home. Look, Sheriff, I'm I'm just a working trail boss. I got a herd blocked up in the hills. Two hours ride north of here. Be a fool to lie about anything. It's easy to check on as that. Of course. 
The only reason I came into Mesa was to see if there was another pass through the hills. That's one reason. Sam Burton could be another. Well, no. If I really killed him, would I be bringing his family into town? I don't know. Ain't paid to know. Well, you might try finding out. Sure, he will. When? Well, as soon as the circuit court judge gets here. How soon will that be? He's holding court up in Anaconda right now. That's the county seat. All right. How soon will he be here? Well, could be a week, maybe a month. A month? I'd lose the herd. You lose a mighty sight more than that if the jury finds you guilty. But you won't find it so bad. Look, Sheriff. Now, you believe I'm a trail boss. Why don't you at least try believing that maybe I didn't kill Burton? Two witnesses, for one thing. For another, ten years ago, Sam Burton was an outlaw. Only his wife and me know that. Nobody else, not even his son. What's that got to do with me? You're a trail boss now. Can you prove to me what you were ten years ago and where? Sure, given time. You're gonna have the time. Look, could you at least notify my man? You say it's a two hours ride north? Sure. I'll send a man in the morning. <laughs> What's the matter? You got a face as long as a brood mare's tail. Well, Mr. Fever's been gone all night. He should have found what he's after and come back by now. Well, yeah, but look, Roddy, Mesa's a town, ain't it? Yeah. And a town's full of people, ain't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, taking one thing with another, it kind of stands to reason half of them people would be women. Yeah. Then quit worrying. Hey, Roddy! Found a way through the hills. Oh, yeah? Well, what's the matter with you? Well, Mr. Paver ain't back yet. Well, he can just catch up with us. Let's get that herd moved. Well, we're not gonna move out till he gets back. Look, Roddy, Mr. Favor's a... Well, I mean, Mesa's a town. I know. Mesa's a town, and it's got people in it, and half of them are women. <laughs> what did I say wrong? Well, nothing. Only you said it twice. Except the first time I said it. Mr. Wishbone, look out there. Morning. 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 Uh, Dan Dooley's the name. <laughs> Don't ever sleep in a livery stable if you can help it. <clears throat> yeah, we'll make a real effort. A feller named uh, Rowdy Yates around? Yeah, that's me. Your boss is in jail. For what? Murder. Murder? Mr. Favors in jail! What for? Murder! Where do you think you're going, Mesa? I said I'm going in there alone. Yep, you did. You men are going to stay with the herd, understand? Benton's staying with the herd. I didn't put Benton in charge. Maybe you better tell him. You men are fired, all of you. Rowdy, you can't keep us out here. Mr. Favor in jail, charged with murder. I said you're fired. Well, ain't no use hanging around a place where we ain't being paid to hang around. Let's go to town. <laughs>
Careful with that rifle, it might go off. It sure will if you try anything. I want to talk to one of your passengers. Right after it's till we get to Mesa. I'll talk to that passenger here. Sorry, mister. Everybody out. Boy, take a look inside. The driver's bleeding a little bit, but... Where's the priest? Nobody inside. He's got to be. Well, I'm not a priest. I can prove it. Well, I wouldn't doubt it, madam. Well, you watch your language. You? I I'm a clerk at the Anaconda Hotel. I've been a clerk all my life, ever since I've been old I enough... I can vouch for Mr. Hooper. Yes. He's already booked me a room. And what are you? The name's Owens. As for what I am, well, I'm generally a bit shy about it. But as things are, do you mind if I get something out of it? Go ahead. Fifty-two pieces of paper. Fascinating pieces, though. Put them away. Eddie, go get your horse and Maury's. You find anything up there? Nothing. Owens. Remind me the next time we meet not to engage you in a friendly game of cards. I don't play a friendly game of cards. Now listen here, Sheriff. Now, we don't plan on going up against the law. We don't plan on tearing down this place rock by rock. But we will if you don't let Mr. Favor go. Understand? Sir? charge of the herd. Well, Benton's in charge. But I didn't leave Benton in charge. Why aren't you over the herd? We've been fired. Fired? By who? Rowdy. Well, well, I told them I was coming in here alone, and they wouldn't listen to me. So I fired them all. Well, you ain't never gonna get to be trail boss unless you uh, learn how to fire a man so he stays fired. Get on back to the drive. I'll catch up. Look, we're not going to let you sit in this jail just because some small town sheriff made a mistake. Oh, no. He didn't make no mistake. Well, you didn't kill anybody. Did you? No, of course I didn't kill nobody. But there's evidence. Two witnesses. Sheriff! Stagecoach has been held up. Joe Wendell's wounded pretty good. Let me know what you decided to do about tearing down the jail. Are you hurt bad? Are you all right? Well? Well, there were these ten men, see? Three. And, and they were hollering, and they were shooting. One shot was fired. They were threatening to rob us, and murder us, and, and worse. All they were looking for was a priest. Did they take anything? We, uh, we scared them off. They searched the luggage and took nothing. Sure. How you feel, Joe? Not too bad. Recognize any of the men? Recognized one of the horses. A sorrow with a spot on his head and a strip on his nose. 
That sounds like... It was. Sam Burton's. I don't know whether that's good for you or bad. We got better than a half a hundred horses in our remuda. I sure wouldn't need to steal one. I, uh... I think you and me'd best ride out to Burton Ranch. Now that they've had a chance to cool off a bit, maybe Mrs. Burton and the boy will remember more than the set. I sure hope so. How are you, Dan? Fine, Father Owen. I'm in a bit of a hurry. The wagon's all loaded and ready. Oh, why? You are in an almighty hurry. Ha oh. Is that blasphemy, Father? I think it'll get by, and I am in a hurry. Well, then I won't be keeping you. Except, how safe are you going to be? Transporting the building equipment and the stained glass for the church and, and all that money to build it all the way to Anaconda and... I, and don't try telling me the Lord will look after you. I hope he will, and I'm trying to make it a little easy for him. Goodbye, Dan. Goodbye, Father. There you are. There you are. Off you go, Father. <laughs> That's the horse we found in the barn when we got back. Explain. Explains why the outlaws stopped here. Yeah. His friends. We don't know that, son. Well, they took Pa's horse and left him behind so Pa wouldn't follow him. The man's a trail boss, Hal. The man's a murderer. Mrs. Burton. The holding up of the stagecoach and the swapping of the horses creates considerable doubt as to Mr. Favor's guilt. Not in my mind. Now, he's got a herd of 3,000 head he's taken north. I wouldn't feel right holding him in Mesa for a month. You mean you're going to let him go? We're following the herd along toward Anaconda, where he can get a hearing before Circuit Judge Evans. Everybody's worrying about him. Nobody's remembering Pa. You want to see a man hanged, even if he ain't the one who killed your father? He is. Mrs. Burton, you'll have to go along with us, unless you want to drop the charges against him. No! We go in my wagon, Mrs. Burton. I'll send Dooley out to take over the ranch. Well, nothing seems to matter much anymore. We'll do as you say, Sheriff. <laughs> up ahead. It's kind of deep, though. I figure if we go down to where it widens out, we'll lose a couple hours. I'll take a look at it. Mr. Favor, I can't let you out of my sight. Well, come on with me, then. In a buggy? Look, Sheriff, I'm going to Anaconda with you. Fortunately, the herd's going in the same direction, so uh, while I'm still with it, I'm trail boss. I've got my job to do. So have I. Who's your best hand, Mr. Favor? Right here. Trust him. When anything happens to me, he takes over. Take over. Young man. Yeah? The law says that a deputy or a sheriff has to keep an accused man always under guard. Now, I'm a little long in the tooth and lame in the leg to go galloping off after Longhorns. That's why I'm going to deputize you to watch out for Mr. Favor there. Deputize me? Oh, no, no, no. Well, he's the boss, huh? He's also got a serious charge hanging over his head, and somebody has to keep an eye on him at all times. No, Sheriff, you, you better get yourself another boy. All right, in that case, go get him. Tell him I'm taking him back to Mesa to wait for the circuit judge. The 
matter how long it takes. Well, heck, I'll make a good deputy, Sheriff. Raise your right hand. You swear to perform the duties and obligations of a deputy sheriff, to keep constant watch over the prisoner assigned to you, and to deliver him to the duly constituted authorities in Anaconda, say, help the gun? Yeah, I, sure. Say, I do. Hmm? Oh, I do, I do. All right. Go get him. Go ahead. <laughs> Mr. Wilson, you, you just deputized one of his own men. We've well, been riding with 25 of his own men. You'll never get to Anaconda. If Mr. Favor wants to, Hal, not only he won't get to Anaconda, you and I won't either. Sheriff witnesses were all in his hands. You did that deliberate. That's right. Well, it sounds like you believe he's innocent. What I believe don't go in a court of law, but I do believe so. You see how his men respect him? I also seen him kill my father. Keep your voice down. Let her sleep. Sleep and she'll forget. I ain't gonna forget. back and tell him to slow down the herd. I don't want him bunching up here. Oh, sure. Hey, Quint. I told you to do it. Well, I can't do that, boss. Well, that was an order. Yeah, well, as a, as a cowhand, I'd have to obey that order, but as a deputy sheriff, I can't do it. Quince, why don't you ride back and tell him to slow up the herd, huh? Shadow tonight, Mr. Favor. Well, Mr. Favor, you haven't got but half. Well, what'll you have tonight, Mr. Deputy? Stew or stew? Yeah, let's see. Uh, I believe I'll have stew. Yeah, that's fine. Thanks. Now, you sit here and keep that tin star of yours shiny. I'm gonna go get something to eat. Some idiot come along and took mine. Oh, really? You uh, better make that another one. Now, I'm just going over to the buggy there to talk to the boy. You can stay here and watch me. All right. Here, you better have some of this. Hey, come on. You can hate me just as good on a full stomach. Stay away from me. Look, why would I have wanted to kill your father? You can answer that better than me. The answer is I didn't. You're a trail boss. You got a lot of men working for you. You got a big herd to look after. You ride a horse good, you do your job. So why couldn't you let my father alone? I don't want to live as long as you keep on living. As long as I keep remembering that gun in your hand and paw dead at your feet.
Mr. Favor. Yes, ma'am. I heard you talking to Hal. I don't know what to think. Sam's dead. But what I thought I saw doesn't fit with what I see now. I called you a murderer. I can't blame you, Mrs. Burton. Well, that's not important. What is... Mr. Favor, do you know what... what Sam was before we settled at Mesa? The sheriff told me. Well, no matter how mad Hal makes you, you won't tell him about his father. No, oh, of course not. He'll get over it. I'm sure he will. card sharp. Playing solitaire at that. I hardly expected to see you again. Well, our uh, information was wrong. The priest wasn't coming by stagecoach. Stained glass window here, Gaff. Stealing church supplies. Your information wasn't wrong. There was no priest on that stagecoach. I was on that coach. Are you a priest? I am. Well, now, what do you know? A lion priest. Oh, no. I never denied I was one. You never asked me. Well, my name is Gaff. I'm Father Owens. Happy to know you. I, uh, got a strong box, Gaff. I'm very happy to know you. Eddie, give Moria a hand. Aren't you a little too handy with cards, Father? It amuses the children. Well, under the circumstances, it amuses me, too, now that we've caught up with you. Jeff, this thing's locked. Naturally. The key, Father. I don't have the key with me. You wouldn't want me to get nasty. The key's an anaconda. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot. You wouldn't lie. So the key's an anaconda. Shoot the lock off. I've not mentioned this before, Mr. Favor. I've had no time to think. But now, well, I must go on alone. Why? Well, those men took the strong box from my wagon, but the money they were after wasn't in it. I still have it. Well, that seems to me like the best news we've had all day, Father. By now they know. They'll be back. So? We've got 25 men against their three. Do you have 25 murderers? Father, we've run across their kind before. We know how to handle them. Well. I could use some sleep. Yeah, yeah. We all Mr. Favor, a man died today because of the money I'm carrying. I keep wondering. Maybe I should have given him the money. Well, now, was it yours to give, Father? Thank you. Good night. Night. Say. I'm going to sleep. Yeah. Right around that boulder there. 
Yeah. You gonna please let me sleep in peace? Yeah. Thank you. Where the money is. Surrounded by two or three thousand head of cattle and a pack of ignorant cowhands. We going in after it. Money's a beautiful thing, Eddie. But dead men don't get any pleasure out of spending it. Gas. There's a man that don't like company. Yeah. A man we could perhaps sell. Goodbye. The priest would. Force him into a choice between a man's death and the money. He'd have no choice. by Anaconda with the herd. How much time would we lose? Anaconda's about 12 miles west of the trail, about three days. Mm. Now, if we took Father Owen's wagon right now and left for Anaconda, we'd be there by morning. Well, that's right, but how about those Jaspers that are after the Father's money? But they wouldn't know the wagon was gone from the herd until morning. How about it, Father? You game? Let's go, Mr. Faber. I'm going with you. Won't need you for this, Roddy. Well, I sort of took an oath on this, and well, you got to clear yourself. Besides, you were the one who said... Father, will you tell the burdens we'll be leaving right away? All right. Quince, you help uh, hitch up the horses. And Pete, you keep moving as fast as you can. Wait a minute, boss. You have to go through with this. Just do what I tell you. I'll catch up with you sooner or later. Well, what am I supposed to do? Just keep on cooking while they're trying you for your life? That's right. All right. But I'm not guaranteeing the quality of it. Well, I don't guarantee the hands will ever know the difference. I'll see, Wishbone. Stubborn show the word for him, you know it, Wishbone? Oh, that remark was entirely uncalled for, Pete Nolan. Mr. Favor's a very reasonable man. Except, of course, when he gets stubborn. This is a little bit too rocky. Wagon could bust a wheel on him. We'll have to clear him out. Anything wrong? It's too rocky for the wagon. We'll have to clear some out. You can use another pair of hands. Thank you, Father. Mr. Faber. There's something I've got to say to you now, before we get to Anaconda. Yes, sir? I'm not going to testify against you. Whatever you think is right. I think testifying against you would be wrong. You're not a killer, Mr. Faber. I've seen enough of those. All those years when Sam was what he was. What about your son? Oh, Hal's a good boy. 
He'll listen to me once you've gone. And he doesn't have to remember seeing you and Sam together. I hope so. No wonder he's such a good boy. Got such a good mother. That does it. Should we get going? The boy's gone. Couldn't have gone far. He was here just a minute ago. Can't leave without him. No sign of the boy or his rifle. I can't understand why he ran away or where. He's after you if that's the kid, boss. Well, uh, thank you, son. Found our friends if you hadn't pointed them out. Now suppose we go join them, huh? I suggest you drop those guns if you don't want him to die. No, madam. Please stay where you are. Eddie, let the boy go to his mother. That's my father's. It was your father's. I despise domestic scenes. Shall we end this one quickly? Well, father, we meet a third time. And a final one. You will kindly tell me where that money is. At once. Well, it's here somewhere. All right, go collect their guns. Now, the rest of you. I want everything in that wagon unloaded and open. If you force us to do it, we'll have to kill you first. What's the matter? That window too heavy?
Your boys are needed. I intend to have that money, Father. Now, I realize quite well you would rather die before you turn over church funds to me. But would you let others die? They'll have to kill us all sooner or later anyway. Mr. Favor may be right. But if he's wrong, do you want to take that chance? The money isn't mine. All right. Who will be first, Father? The boy or his mother? The boy, then. All right, Eddie. No! Don't tell him, Father. They wouldn't have found you if I hadn't been shooting Mr. Favor. I'm sorry, Mr. Favor. True repentance. Well, Father. I'll tell you where the money is. Well, you restore my faith, Father. Where is it? <laughs> Mr. Favor, I resent you putting your hands on me. Further, I have no intention of being led to the law like a sheep to a slaughter pen. You'll have to kill me yourself. Either you or the good father there. Well, I didn't think either of you would. So if you'll all excuse me. Wait a minute, Gap. Sheriff Wilson deputized me. I'll kill you. In cold blood? Yeah. All I have to do is remember that you're the one who killed Burton. Well, I'll leave you to your memory. <laughs> the money's saved now, but where is it? In the simplest of all places. The one place cunning men like these would never think of looking. I could. Yeah. Well, now, let's see how good you are as a drover. You can ride back a drag for the next three days. See anything yet, Rowdy? No, not a thing, Jim. Oh, I'm sure getting anxious. Yes, we all are. Yeah, you bet. Some signs pretty soon, shouldn't we? Yeah, this grass wouldn't feed a herd of goats. Yeah, it looks like the goats have already been here. Drought. Well, it won't make any difference. We'll have them in the shipping pens by nightfall. We hope. We're not there yet. Well, we're getting real close, Mr. Wishbone. Yeah, nothing but fences. I sure couldn't live in a country like this, all fenced in. Well, I'll be glad to get that done, though. Ain't you excited? Well, I'm saving up. Me too. I haven't had a drop of water for two days. I want to be real good and thirsty. Get out! We can smell Sedalia even if you can't. What are you planning on doing first, Rowdy? Well, I'll tell you, Teddy. 
After I get myself a bath, a real tub with hot water, shaved haircut and all them trimmings, I'm gonna order myself some of the finest city clothes you ever saw. If you know anybody in today, they sure ain't gonna hardly know you. <laughs> well, that's right. Then I'm gonna get myself a real expensive Delmonico's dinner. What about liquor? I can just see all those pretty girls. Ooh, wait till I get my hand. <laughs> What is it? Well, look at it. It's a fire, isn't it? Oh, and that smoke, but that smoke from a boiler. That's a railroad. That's the Dahlia. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> look, Bob, we made it. Looks a long ways off to me. Yeah, but we got nothing to worry about now. Oh, no. Nothing except fences, grass, and water, and a place to hold them, and the buyers, the inspectors, the market price, freight costs, the mood of the world. In the state of a million housewives' digestion. Well, take it easy, will you? It'll be all right. I'll take it easy when I got the money in hand and this beef out of my sight. Sidania! No more gunshots, any of you. You want to go chasing steers all over the state of Missouri? Just calm down until you get them in the pens in Sedalia. You'll have plenty of time to celebrate then. You promise that, Mr. Favor? Now, you ain't going to be like some of these bosses. Hold back most of a man's money so as he can't go to town and blow off steam. Well, I did sort of hope that I was bossing grown men. You'll get your pay when a job's done. Till then, you're still working, so get them moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It still looks good, though, don't it? I'd rather see it closer, too. You two take them on till noon and then hold them there. I'll go ahead and contact the buyers. Let them know we're coming. Right. Favor, I'm outside with 3,000 head of prime beef. Mr. Favor. Hey, what's the matter with all you people? Since when ain't a new herd good news in Sedalia? Since two days ago when the panic started. Panic? Haven't you heard? The biggest bank in New York went under. Bottoms dropped out of everything. Nobody's doing a thing. Things closing up all over. No cash, no credit, no buyers for the cattle. Your price is going down, huh? All the way down to zero. No buyers at all. Can't be. Somebody's got to be buying cattle. Nobody's got any money to buy. Anybody's got any cash, he's hanging on to it. What banks are still open won't lend a cent. But you come all the way from Texas. I know, Mr. Favor, but you're not the only one. It's the same all up and down the line, Abilene, Dodge. It's tough luck. I'd have been in the same boat myself, only I got here two weeks ago. Well, just what am I supposed to do with this herd? I don't know. If you're lucky, maybe you can sell them for tallow, a couple of dollars a head. Tallow? This is prime beef. Seems nobody's eating prime beef these days. At least no call for it. This can't last forever. Maybe not. Sure, there's been panics before. They don't last. A few days and it all blows over. Maybe. Well, people get the confidence back. Things can't stand still. You've got to live, to eat. They start buying again. Sure, but when? Oh, we'll just wait it out. A few days, we get the most. People calm down. Buyers will show up. Yeah, we'll just uh, hold the herd outside of town for a while. Wait it out. Won't do any harm to try, I guess. You'll need grass, Mr. Favor. That'll be hard to find. That's right. Range around here is scarce. It's all burned up. 
tried to fatten my herd up a little before selling them. Had to go clear over to Baxter Springs before I could find enough. There ain't nothing at all closer than that. Well, there, there is the Cardwell place. It's about the only good grass near Sedalia. Yeah, but that's not open range. It's down in the valley. It's fenced. We'll pay for grazing fees for a few days. Can't be much. Where is this Cardwell? Well, it's his widow, Emma Cardwell, you'll have to talk to. The road west, you'll know it by the grass. Thanks. Finished already, Garcia? Mrs. Cardwell? Oh. oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Who are you? My name's Favor. Favor? You're not from around here. No, I'm not. Just come up from Texas. That's what I thought. And you're a drover, too, from the smell of you. Oh, I uh, just brought a herd up the trail. I need to graze them, and I'd like to hire pasturage from you. We won't cause you any trouble. We'll camp down by the creek. I wouldn't even bother you in the first place. Normally, we'd just throw them in the pen and forget about them. But uh, with this panic on, there's no buyers, and I'll have to wait for a few days. You're asking me to do you a kindness. I'm offering you a business proposition. You've got grass. I need it. I'm willing to pay for it. How much? Well, any reasonable price, sir. I'll leave that up to you, ma'am. You said a few days. How long would you want to stay, mister? Well, I couldn't say exactly, but uh, I'd say a week at the outside. How many head of cattle do you have? I'm roughly 3,000, maybe a few more. Then the price will be 25 cents per head per week. Per week? But that's way too much, ma'am. Then find your grass someplace else, Mr. Favor. But there isn't any place else. Unless because of the panic here just taking advantage of me. I didn't ask you to come here. You wanted my terms, I gave them to you. Now take it or leave it. All right, I'll take it for a week. We'll put it on paper. You write. As of this date, I promise to pay Emma Cardwell, a grazing fee of 25 cents per week for each of 3,000 head of cattle, payable before said cattle leave the premises. Date it and sign it. Garcia will give you a hand. This is Cardwell. You drive a hard bargain with your sharp sense of business. Something uh, puzzles me. What? Well, that grass hasn't been grazed in quite a while. How come you let it go to waste? Why don't you use it to raise your own stock? I don't think that's any of your business. Yeah, I think I'm out of here. 
<laughs> hey, well, look at Scarlett getting all sharped up. I don't aim to waste no time before I belly up the bar. What are you doing there, Jim? Well, I'm figuring out how much I got coming. I think I got enough to go back east, New York. Hey, maybe Philadelphia would miss favor. Yeah. You won't see me on this world. Yeah, well, knowing you, you won't get past the first Monty table with that dough of yours. Here comes Mr. Favor. Boss. Where are the yeah. buyers, boss? Hey, they're probably coming out separate like, huh? Yeah, and carriages probably, huh? Something wrong? I'll give it to you straight. Country's in a panic. No buyers, no market, no sale. You mean we can't sell the herd? No money for us? We ain't going to town tonight, blow off some steam. That's it? When do we go? I don't know. We'll just have to hold the herd a while until this blows over and we can get a decent price for the feed. I found some grass and hired the ground. It's close enough to town, all right, but I got no money to give you. So you promised us, Mr. Favor. And you'll get it when I get it. Nothing I can do about it. Well, there's something I can do about it. I can quit. We signed on to go to Sedalia. This is Sedalia. And we're through. You free to go any time? Only question is, do you want to go empty-handed, or do you want to wait until I can get you some money? You got a pretty good argument there. Well, anyway, we agreed to sign on with Mr. Favor till the end of the trail. That means until the herd is sold. Well, sure, we'll stay, Mr. Favor. How long do you figure it'll be, Mr. Favor? I just don't know. I hope no more than a week, but I can't promise anything. Well, let's head him out. Follow me in. Always something, is I was sort of hoping that this time it might be different. Always something. Mr. Favor, not much change in two days. None I could see. Well, anyway, you got grass. Surprise me. You're the first old Emma would ever lease to. No doubt that. She drives a hard bargain. She got something against cattlemen? I don't know. Her husband was one of them that started the business here. He made Sedalia a shipping point. He helped to get the pens built. And then he sort of lost out. I guess he got the blues. Killed himself. He must have left her well off enough. She hadn't done anything with the land. Until now. Is she charging you steep? More than enough. I can't stay there long. Maybe you ought to think about wintering those cattle. Take them out on the range, west or north. Sell them in the spring, all fattened up. Prices ought to be back by then. Oh, I got a lot of owners back in Texas waiting for their money. I got notes coming due in October. It's the same around here. They figured they'd have the money back by then. Say, uh, how much you think you got to get out of that herd? Mm, at least $25 a head. Maybe you better think about wintering. If they don't get their money, I don't know what they're going to do. A lot of places going to be foreclosed this winter. I want to see it. Then what are we going to do? I don't know. Doesn't seem like anything we can do. Well, what about driving them to another town, Abilene or Ellsworth? Yeah, maybe east to St. Louis. Well, it's the same all over. The prices drop right down to the floor. Looks pretty old blues to me. That don't sound like you. This ain't weather or cattle or horses, something you can get your hands into. Do something about it. Banking, money, I don't know. It's beyond me. People just get over this darn panic. Well, if just one buyer would show up, that's all it'd take. Wishbone? What are you up to? Never mind. Mr. Favor, tell you you'd go in the town? I don't need his say so nor yours. Now, just keep your mouth shut. You run out on us? Well, what if I am? I came to Sedalia. That's all I bargained for. Listen, you know Mr. Favor depends on you more than he does anybody else. Now, who he depends on is his affair. And where I go and when is mine. Now, you wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Pete, now, don't you come one step near. Listen, I'm not going to let you go until you go over and talk it over with Mr. Favor. Oh, I guess you're right. Pete, you know how specially fond of you I am. Mm -hmm. Well, so you'll know how much I hate to do this. Do what? 
I can hardly believe it. Wishbone hitting you over the head and deserting? It's right when we need every man the most. This lump on my head didn't grow from a seed. There ought to be some kind of mistake. There ain't no mistake. He just flew the coop. And without his money. So somebody else will do the cooking. You'll live without him. Yeah, but it won't be the same. We have all of us wishbone. It's not true, Mr. Rowdy. He wouldn't do it, I know. I'll just forget it, will you, Mushy? Well, I can't forget it, Mr. Nolan. Sure, I wonder where he is. What he's doing. <laughs> I do. My name's Smith. I see by the tag on your luggage you're going to Sedalia. Oh, yes, yes, I am. So am I. That's a coincidence, isn't it? I uh, haven't seen you on the train before, have I? Well, no, I just got on the last station. Had to stop off before Sedalia on a little business. I didn't get your name. Oh, Draper. I do, Mr. Draper. Uh, what business would you be in? I work for the government. I kind of thought maybe you'd be in the cattle business. Oh, is that your line? Yes, it is. A cattle buyer, that's what I am. Representing one of the biggest interests back east. That's so. Come out to check the stock in Sedalia. You planning to buy? Well, I don't just check them for my health, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, this panic hasn't affected your business then. A panic? What panic? What? Pure and utter nonsense. People got to eat, don't they? That's what I always say. People got to eat, and that means beef, panic or no panic. Of course, I might get a little better price that way. <laughs> no, I mean to pay every cent that cattle's worth. I see. Uh, you got any friends in Sedalia that are in beef? You might uh, put them on to me. J.W. Smith. Probably be staying at the drover house. Hmm. Well, I'd be glad to. Well, I guess we have time to have a cigar before we get to town, hmm? Well, thank you very much. Don't mind if I do. Uh -huh. Light here someplace. <clears throat> Don't say, Mr. Smith. Oh, yes, indeed. People got to eat, don't they? That's what I always say. So if you can find me a good herd of two, three thousand, I'll go thirty-five dollars a head and glad to. Uh, who'd you say your interests were back east, Mr. Smith? Uh, Nolan and Yates. Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, all over. You heard of them, of course. Oh, of course. Well, now, Mr. Smith, there's a shortage of real good beef right now, but it just might be that we'll be able to get our hands on some. So why don't you just sit tight and... Let us see what we can do. Well, fine, gentlemen. Uh, you'll be able to reach me at the Drover house, uh, if it don't take too long, that is, because I might be able to find what I want in Abilene or beyond. Oh, no, no, it won't take long. Uh, we'll contact you this afternoon, no later. Now, you just sit tight. Fine, gentlemen, thank you. Oh, it's a cash deal, you know. Say, why didn't you tell him about the favor herd? Don't be a fool. He's willing to pay $35 a head. Faber's willing to take 25, maybe even less by now. Is there any reason why we shouldn't make a profit of $10? After all, it's perfectly legitimate. We've brought the two parties together. That ought to be worth something. Oh, but he wants cash. We're going to have to raise some cash. Yeah, but where? Well, I've got a little in the bank. You have too, no doubt. And then there's uh, Burke and Wilson. And you'll think of some others. Oh, come on. We haven't got all day. Say, where'd this Smith come from, anyway? By Nolan and Yates, of course. You heard him. Now get going. I beg your pardon. I'm looking for the secretary. Well, that's me. 
My name is Walters. Mine's Draper. I represent the government. Looking for beef. A buyer for the government? That's right. I've been advised there's a herd of 3,000 head due to hit Sedalia right about now. You must mean the Gill Favor Drive. Well, so they've arrived. Well, take me to the poor stranded trail boss. Well, what makes you think he's poor and stranded? You know the answer to that as well as I do, Mr. Walters. Uh, panic, banks closing, lack of buyers. Wrong again, Mr. Draper. Business may not be humming as usual, but Sedalia's not out of buyers yet. You mean Mr. Favor's been approached by another buyer? That's probably a speculator trying to take advantage of the panic. Well, where is Mr. Favor's camp? I'm prepared to make him a fair bid. Are you prepared to bid against an offer of $35 a head cash? I'm afraid not. I didn't think so. I'm afraid you're out of luck, Mr. Draper. Did you say Mr. Smith? Mr. Smith, of Nolan and Yates. Uh, Twenty's as high as we can go. And take my advice, Mr. Favor. It's the only offer you're likely to get. Now, here's $1,000 just to bind the deal. The rest tomorrow when we take possession. All right. Fine, good. You won't regret this, Mr. Favor. You'll be the only trail boss that comes out so well. See you in the morning. I guess that's all that's left to do. Take much of a profit for the owners, but at least it's a profit and the men will get paid. Will you look who's here? Mr. Wishbone, I knew you'd be back. You didn't know nothing of the kind. I thought I saw him tie up at the hitch rack, but I didn't think I could believe my eyes. Oh, it's him, all right. The little rat that thought the ship was going to sink. Now, well, Pete Nolan, you got no call calling me names like that. You're just a sore head. You split my scalp and then you got the nerve to call me a sore head. Ah, oh, Pete, you're making a mountain out of a little old lump. Well, I'll hit you on the hardest part of your head and put a nice, soothing compress on it to ease the misery. Uh, hi, Mr. Favor. Everybody? You forgot something, maybe? Uh, I thought as long as I'd come this far, I'd stop in and make your last supper. Last supper? How'd you know it was going to be our last supper? Or maybe you got wind of the fact that we're selling the herd? Oh, somebody buying the herd? Well, that's fine, isn't it? That's mighty fine. So where you been? What have you been up to in those clothes? Uh, up to in these clothes? Yeah, up to in those clothes. Well, Mr. Fravor. Yeah? I've got a confession to make. I should think you would. Well, I knew the fix you were in. Well, the fix we were all in. Go on. So I tried to help you. Why, bless you, Wish. And just how did you try and help us? And how didn't it work out? Well, only because my uncle-in-law in Sedalia. Oh, I never told you about him, did I? Uh, well, he didn't... Didn't, uh... Didn't what? Didn't like my looks. Wouldn't speak to me. As a matter of fact, he wouldn't even recognize me. And as another matter of fact, he had me thrown out of his presence. And as a last matter of fact, he... I snuck back into camp and can't say I helped one solitary thing. Uh, any questions? Worst bone, you're a flat-mouthed liar. You smell that money that you ran out on. Oh, I didn't hear one word about it. Well, I'm mighty glad for everybody. Get a nice price, did you? Oh, enough to pay the wages you get coming, if any, now. Well, don't worry about that. Uh, how much did you get? Twenty a head. Twenty dollars? Why, those thieving... You didn't know anything about it, huh? Wait a minute. What do you know about this? Uh, nothing. Uh, not a thing. I gotta get the cooking done. But you should have held out for more. Twenty dollars isn't enough. It's enough for us. How about it, Mr. Favor? All right, line up, I'll count it out. But until we get the herd turned over tomorrow, you can't go into town. Tastes funny, don't it? Yeah. I like Mushy's cooking this morning better. You two complaining about the food after all the guzzling you've done these months? Well, maybe I just never spoke up before. Plenty of seconds, everybody. No, thank you. Hey, look it. Ain't that our buyer? Mr. Favor? You're getting early, ain't you? You said morning. I didn't come for the herd. I want my money back. 
This is Marshal Thorpe for Sedalia. If you don't hand it over, he'll throw you in jail. What? You made a deal. You tried to pull a swindle on me, sending that fake cattle buyer into town. What are you talking about? Mr. Smith, or whatever his name is, that's what I'm talking about. $35 a head for his big interest back east, that's what I'm talking about. But he's not registered at the hotel. And when we wired back east, we found that his big interest, Nolan and Yates, don't exist. Wait a minute. What did this Mr. Smith look like? Whiskery old character. I should have known from his looks he was a common criminal. Wishbone? Yeah. Well, that's him. That's the man. I told you, Marshal. Well, Mr. Favor didn't have anything to do with this. It was all my own idea. Now, you can throw me in jail if you have to. But uh, he didn't have anything to do with it. None of them did. I don't believe you. Arrest him, Marshal. Now, now, all you want your money back, isn't it, Matt? Well? Well, there's no use throwing anybody in jail. He was just trying to help his boss out of a hole. You weren't so mighty innocent, Mr. Secretary. You were pretty quick to recognize a $15 head profit. I want my money back. Every cent of it. You'll get it. It's not all there. You'll hear from me. Thanks, Mr. Favor. Just don't let any of your men try anything like that again. I might have to do something about it. Wishbone? I know. I'm sorry. I thought it'd work. I sure didn't think it'd turn out like this. I didn't know they were going to call it a swindle. I'm sorry I had to hit you, Pete. Well, it's... Well, you couldn't hit hard enough to hurt anybody. And I'm sorry you all had to give the money back. Uh, Wishbone, about those seconds, sir. I'd like some. Yeah, me too. I'm hungry. I haven't had any decent food since you left, Wish. Yeah, it'd be good to have real cooking again. Well, right over here. What now? We can't stay here. We're causing us money we ain't got. We'll move them out in the morning. Yeah, but where to? Northwest Nebraska, find some range we can winter them on. It's the only thing, unless we can find a buyer on the way. I don't know how the men are going to take to that, whether they'll go along or not. Give them IOUs and let them go. We'll have to keep enough to hold the herd. I think we'll have that in a minute. Yeah, well, what about Miss Carter? Well, you got to pay her, too. We'll have to take an IOU, too. Oh. Nothing else we can do. so they don't crowd in at the gate. Right. Well, I ought to take down some of that fence. Well, I don't want to have to pay for damages on top of what we already owe. Marshal Thorpe from Sedalia. And Mrs. Cardwell's man. Mr. Favor, I'm sorry. You'll have to move your herd back. Why? Unless you're prepared to pay what you owe Mrs. Cardwell. Of course, I can't pay cash right now. Made up an I.O.U., though. It's just going to drop by the house. Won't do. I've got an injunction. Court order. She wants her money in cash before you move one head off her land. You and every man here will be in contempt of court. Liable for a stiff fine and jail sentence if you move them. You want to risk that? Move them back! <laughs> Talk with Mrs. Cardwell. Let Rowdy know. can't pay, and you know why. And you knew it from the beginning. You signed an agreement. So it was just a trap. You knew I couldn't sell the herd. You also agreed not to move them until you paid. I made out an IOU. 
I'm taking the herd out to open range and winter them. When I sell them in the spring, you'll get your money with interest. I'll get it now. How? I'll take the cattle off your hands. You'll buy them? How much? Ten dollars a head. Ten? I could have said less. I got men out there. I got to pay them. Ten dollars will pay them. I could sell them almost as much for tallow. You'd have to move them first. You all sewed up, huh? And you knew it from the start. Why? It's my business. Well, it's my business now. What is it, anyway? Your husband? You're blaming all cattlemen for his death, huh? It was cattlemen that did it. Swindled him, took away his life's work, everything he valued, loved. So you're blaming us who didn't even know him? No, there's more. You belong to a breed of men. You come tearing into a town like a bunch of maniacs. Shooting, drinking, killing. I had a son. Well, you won't have much to celebrate with this time. Ten dollars a head, take it or leave it. Well, I won't take it. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna fight you, lady. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Faber. I was only doing my duty. She's a strange old woman. Just the same, don't try taking them out. What are we gonna do? We'll take them out. Tonight in the dark. Maybe mean a fight. Yeah, I know. We won't have a law on our side this time. Oh, may God I owe yous. Any man who doesn't want to ride tonight is free to leave. No hard feelings. Collins? I owe you don't buy no fun in town. Good night, then. Ready to push him through. Good. You didn't show any movement before it was dark, did you? No. What about the gate, though? We got no time to fool with the gate. You men get to work on that fence. Keep it as quiet as you can. Rowdy, tell them not to push the cows too hard. We don't want them belling up a racket. We ready up here? I warned you, Mr. Faber. All right, you win. Now you're under arrest, all of you. 
Look, he's hurt. We gotta get him someplace where we can do him some good. Let's get him up to the house. And Scott Wells? Yeah, nobody else. Easy. Let's go. Easy. Hurt. Well, don't bring him in here. I don't want your kind around. Get out of the way, Mr. Cardwell. Come here. That wound don't look too bad. Ooh, what's the matter? Maybe it was a fall off the horse. He's young, isn't he? Well, how bad is it? I just don't know. The bullet's gonna come out of there. Well, yeah, I can do that. Well, I'll get some hot water. Excuse me. Who's got my doctor bag? Here you are, wishbone. sleeping now. It's gonna be all right. You want to take us in? No, you can stay here. But there'll have to be a charge, so don't try to leave. My men will stay to watch. But you people want to trail herds in Sedalia. We do. Not everybody's like Emma. The merchants in town were praying you'd sell your herd because they need your business. Marshal, what do you think we'll get? Well, I think I can arrange with the judge to let you all off with fines, providing your man in there don't die, and that ain't likely. What are we going to pay them fines with? Well, that's up to you. I'll do all I can. Just don't try to get away again. Come on. Mr. Favor, we've been talking to this, some of us. And, well, we just figure you're licked. Now, we was willing to stick around as long as there's anything we could do. You want to make a run for it? No, sir. No, we don't. We just like going to town and pay our fines and be done with it. How many times have I got to tell you I ain't got the money? Now, you can sell to Miss Cardwell. For $10 a head? That'd make our pay. Pay our fines, too. What about the owners? Well, I'm sorry about you and your reputation. Well, I'm not about to give up yet. But... Say your favor. I found this man snooping around the herd looking at the cattle. Who are you, mister? My name's Draper, Mr. Favor. I represent the government. I'm buying beef for the army. You, a buyer? Oh, how do you do, Mr. Smith? Well, just call me Wishbone. Wishbone? You said you were buying cattle, mister? Oh, yes, for the Missouri River forts, uh, Leavenworth and Atchison. The army needs quite a bit right now. They're moving the Pawnee tribe south to Indian territory. They have to be fed. How much do you need? Well, I'll take all you have. At what price? I was authorized before the panic to offer $33 a head for prime beef. Now, I understand you've had a higher offer, but that's the best I can do. You said before the panic. What's the price now? Well, my authorization has never been changed. Perhaps the government wants to keep the price up. Anyway, that's my offer. Mr. Draper, I accept. There's uh, just one thing, though. Yeah. What? I, uh, I can't pay you in cash. We pay off in government paper. Government paper? Redeemable with interest 30 days after delivery, upon presentation in Washington. That won't do us any good here. Nobody to redeem it, no cash in town. Unless the banks. And I'm afraid the banks won't cash them either, uh, right now. Them merchants in town? They won't take it for cash? 
Uh, no. How are we gonna pay Mrs. Cardwell's grazing fee? Yeah. Wait a minute. You, you wait here. Just one minute. If you could take this government paper instead of the cash, I'll redeem it as soon as I can. And if you could take just a little bit more for security and let me have enough cash so I could pay them in, I'd, I'd take it as a great kindness. How do I know I'd get my money back? I give you my word. As soon as I get the money from back east, I'll send you yours and you can send me the paper. How do I know it's any good? It's issued by the government. You don't comfort me. I want value received when I give cash. All right, I've, I've got some stock cattle, cows and calves, about 200 head. You can use them to start your own herd on this grass. I'll sell them for the cash I need. No, no cattle, no government paper. I want cash. Sorry for you. I've known women before who lost their son and husband. It didn't warp them, make them inhuman like you. No, you're not hurting just me and my men, like that boy in there. You're depriving your own neighbors, people who ought to be your friend. But you don't care about that, do you? You don't care about anything except your own personal little hate. I'm sorry for you. Godwell? I better be moving along. Oh, no, you stay put. I want to thank you for taking care of me. Look, I wouldn't worry too much about what Mr. Favor said. He gets a little riled up sometimes. Not that he hasn't got reason to this time. You know, we're... We're really stranded here with no money, no job, no way to get home, nothing. Well, you could stay here, work for me. I need a hand. Well, I, I couldn't do that, not knowing my friend is still in trouble. About your boy, why don't you tell me about him? What was he like and all? Oh, he was uh, just an ordinary boy, I guess. Just like any other. Oh, he didn't seem ordinary to me. Yeah, it never seems that way to a mother. I was the apple of my mother's eye, even when I was in trouble. And that was often. She just about had a fit when I went off to work cattle. He always wanted me to be a preacher, a lawyer, or something like that. Yeah, he wanted to be a cowboy, too. That's one of the reasons. Yeah, but he didn't leave. No, I didn't let him. And then he, he started dressing like that. Hanging around the pens and the cattlemen, waiting for the herds to come in, drinking with the men, wearing a gun. It was bound to happen sooner or later. A fight. He didn't know what he was doing. Ma'am, you, you see, when men get to the end of a trail drive, they like to live some. There's a lot of long, hard months out there, wind and rain and cold and dust, rivers flooding, sometimes men dying. Well, there ain't no mother out there to comfort a man, uh, no woman to ease loneliness. So when a man gets to town, he likes to you know, live a little. But uh, it, it isn't usually the cattlemen who do the shooting and killing. It's usually men just 
hanging around town have nothing else to do but cause trouble. A lot of them boys just trying to prove their men. Well, fighting's the only way they got to doing it. You're saying it's my fault. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that maybe it isn't the fault of your boys or, or the man who killed them. You see, I know how your boy felt. I'd been in the army and everything, and my mom had to let me go. Well, I'd better be moving along now. No, you... I want to thank you for your kindness, though. I'm not kind. I'm not kind at all. <laughs> Here comes Roddy with Mrs. Cardwell. How do you feel, Roddy? Oh, a little rocky, but I'll be all right. Mr. Favor, you told me you had some stock cattle, about 200 head. About that. Well, I'd, uh, I'd like to look them over, and uh, if they're in good condition, I might be willing to pay $30 a head. Not a penny more. Uh, cash? Well, yeah. I guess if it's all right with Mr. Draper here. Oh, I just want the beef, not the stock cattle. All right. It's fine, just fine. I, uh, I brought this uh, so that you could pay your men. We can settle the exact amount later. I don't know how to thank you, oh, man. Never mind that. I'm sorry you about You had that. a right to be angry, Mr. Favor. My, that smells good. Yeah, that's Wishbone's cooking. Well, I'd be proud if you'd stop and have a bite with us, ma'am. Well, I, I, I'd like that, sir. Sure. Mr. Favor, when, when do we go to town? When you get these cattle delivered in the loading pens at the rail yard, you're practically stepping up to the bar. <laughs> Rowdy. Yeah. How'd you do it? Oh, well, I didn't. She did it all on her own. I just helped keep her on the right track. Like I used to do my ma. Well, you know, I don't think I don't think I've ever seen a better career than that. You see that ranch she's got out there. There's grass out there. Come on, come on. Deputy Sheriff, I lost my horse, so I'm taking yours. Put your hands up. Get down. You don't look like no Deputy Sheriff to me. That rifle ends any arguing. got time to talk about it. As a horse thief, you're pretty bad, mister. I'm no horse thief. My name's Tolan. I'm a deputy out of Raleigh. Sure you are. Can you prove that? Nothing. They stripped me clean. I gotta get to Camp Henley. If I can't have your horse, you take me. First you want to take my horse, then you want me to ride 40 miles out of the way? What else you got to talk about? Who's after you, anyway? Can I have your horse? Look, Raleigh's only six miles away. You can walk it. I'll tell you what. You're a deputy? I'll tell the sheriff. Maybe he'll come out and get you. 
truth, mister, I swear. Oh. Take me, don't you? Now get us on that horsey horse. You try and make me, huh? Now, where's the key? Let me talk. For your sake. You better remember where it is. They're gonna kill me. They'll kill you too if we don't get out of here fast. Who is? Part of the gang that wiped out two army wagons at Feather Canyon last night. Well, you ain't making much sense. Let me tell you. This army wagon stopped. Feather Canyon. They stopped for the night, and I figured to have supper with them. There were 25 of them, replacements for Camp Henley. They hit us so fast and so hard, we didn't have a chance to blink our eyes. By who? Comanches? Is there any of them within 50 miles ahead? White men. They thought they'd massacred us all. That's how I got stripped clean. I played dead. But I heard what they were up to. They're going to ride into Camp Henley tomorrow, posing as the replacements. They're going to take over the whole garrison. What are you talking about? Who's going to ride in there? I don't know. I waited for my chance while they were stripping the bodies, putting on the uniforms themselves. I crawled away, grabbed the horse, but some of them saw me. You don't think they're gonna let me run around loose, do you? They gotta come after me. Well, maybe they, maybe they gave up. Maybe they gave up on you. No, they're out there somewhere. I would have made it if I hadn't lost my horse. Yes, sir, I think you lost your brain. You know what it means to lose that camp? No protection in this whole territory. That gang will loot every town. They'll raid and rob every ranch. They'll cut down every traveler. That's their plan. Well, if you're lying to me, mister. I'm not lying. 40 miles, that's a long way even for a single rider. Just get me there, mister. I gotta let them know what's happened. Sometimes doesn't pay a man to roll out of his blanket in the morning. I think you're out of your mind, but I'll take you to your sheriff. Dying, so you got no reason for not telling me where that key is. Or if you lied to me. I'm dying, all right. But I ain't lied to you. You'll see. What you waiting for? You want him to turn around and face you? Hold it! Boy, am I glad to see you, Sheriff. Yeah, I'll bet you are. Now, wait a minute, I didn't shoot him. He had me handcuffed because he wanted me to take him to Camp Henley. You're the sheriff from Raleigh, aren't you? Who are you trying to fool, mister? My name's McVeigh. What was my deputy bringing you in for? He wasn't bringing me in. Somebody up there shot him. I don't see nobody up there. Well, they were there a few minutes ago. Lads, turn him loose. Where's Tolan's horse? He didn't have a horse. He was going to take my horse so he'd get to Camp Henley. What are you doing out here? You know about it, too. Huh? Know about what? We're to meet a couple of army wagons from Feather Canyon. Yeah, that's the one he was talking about. That's, that's the wagon. He said all the men were killed. And they, they were coming after him to keep him from getting to Henley. They're, they're gonna, they want to take the place over. Who is? I, I don't know. Look, Sheriff, I swear I didn't kill him. He said there were some men after him. Let's go up and look. 
All right, get him mounted. I'm taking him in. What are you taking me in for? A murder. I, I can prove who I am. I've got papers. Prove I'm with an outfit going north of here to Sedalia. I don't care who you are, mister. Tolan didn't have you manacled for pleasure. Will you, will you take me to Camp Henley? Or send a man in my outfit. It's only a day's ride from here. He, ask for a Gil favor. He'll tell you about it. You can tell this story to the circuit judge. He'll be in town in about a week. A Move. week? Come on. Look, there's bound to be a massacre in this area before a week. Latch! You up there? <laughs> Pass out the posters, Hollis. A hundred dollars to the man who brings in Yates. There are two or three other men with him. They couldn't have gotten far in the last couple of hours. And remember, they killed three of my deputies. Get back. Get back, you men. Let Mr. Baines through. Oh, oh, oh. I thank you, Mr. Hollis. I thank all of you boys for your respect to the dear departed. Oh, boys, if any of you want shaves or barbering, I'll be back in my chair in about an hour. Well, we'll be riding all night. Oh, yes, I heard about that. That's a sorry business. Well, I hope you get your culprits, Mr. McVeigh. I'm only sorry, boys, that you won't be at the funeral of dear old Mrs. Purdy here, because she liked all of you, every one. Now, you say a prayer for her. Get it. All right, let's spread out and find them.
Man, if we ain't found him, they ain't found him either. You hope. You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking about getting me a shave, and I'm thinking about getting me some of that smelly perfume water. You ain't doing nothing till we stable the horses. <laughs> Twenty years I've been married to you. How many times do I have to tell you not to leave cash in the register? Honey, I told you. I forgot. You forgot. You ain't got brains enough to come out of the rain, have you, Nathan? And what are you leaving money on the counter for? I didn't leave any money on the counter. Then what is this? <laughs>
She was a loyal wife and mother, and none of us ever had a finer friend than this sweet soul. And now let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank thee for letting us know Martha Purdy for a spell. And now we send her back home to thee with our love and our gratitude and our regrets. Mostly our regrets for not having done better by her, but knowing that you will. Amen. Take it you're in trouble, Mr. Yates. Oh, you were described on a poster they put out earlier this evening. Now look, mister, I don't no, know... No, 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 don't worry. I'm not as hasty as our sheriff. I like to listen before I pass judgment. Who are you? My name is Baines, Simon Baines. And I'm a man of compassion, I hope. Look, Mr. Baines, I didn't kill those three men. Aren't you telling the truth? Or you can be safe for a while down at my place. Come on. Now, we'll have to drive through town, so you climb inside the hearse. Oh, just for a spell. First customer ever climbed out of there on his own, huh? Well, let's hope you stay that lucky, Miss Yates. This way. Now, sir, you're all safe and snug. Oh, I sure can't figure you out, mister. I've seen a lot of killers in my time, son. You don't look like one. I'm no killer. Well, now, tell me how you got yourself in all this trouble. Well, I just wish that Mr. Favor hadn't sent me on this job, that's all. Who's Mr. Favor? He's my boss. I'm up here buying some cattle for him. That's how I ran across this deputy, Toland. Well, Toland wanted to take my horse, said he had to get to Camp Henley. Said a gang had killed 25 soldiers up around some Feather Canyon or someplace. And they got into the Army uniforms. They're gonna get inside Camp Henley. To do what? Take over this territory, I guess. Rob it blind. <laughs> Well, I can see why the sheriff didn't believe you. You've got to believe me, Mr. Baines. I didn't believe it either until Tolan was killed. Oh, somebody else killed him? Yeah, two men. I just got away from them in town here ten minutes ago. Oh, they're in town, huh? Yeah, I told you. I just got away from them. Oh, <clears throat> never let a razor get dull, Mr. Yates. Outside of mentioning this incredible story to McVeigh, have you told anyone else? No, not a soul. I've been out hiking across the desert. I came here to get a gun and a horse, that's all. I gotta get to that camp. Say, say maybe you can help me get a horse. Oh, I'm sure I can, but what you need right now, my boy, is to lie back and relax. 
Maybe a shave would calm you down. No, thanks. I shaved myself. About the horse, you think you, maybe you could get it? How's a horse going to get you out of this mess? Because if I get to Camp Henley before tomorrow and this story is true, I'll be cleared. And if it's a lie? Oh, I can't think of that now. As a matter of fact, it's as true as gospel, Mr. Yates. How'd you get him? <laughs> With loving kindness. <laughs> what, what kind of a joke is this? It's no joke. Well, now you shut up. You muddle things up enough as it is. They sent you after Tolan, you end up here. Look, we tried. Well, you didn't try hard enough. You're in on this too, huh? We're all mixed up in it, Mr. Yates. Thirty of us. Oh, I don't call myself the leader, but I am handling this end. I'm a poor barber, but a magnificent mortician. Stop using my merchandise. Oh! Now, son, I wouldn't move if I were you. I'm going to give you a very nice funeral with appropriate arrangements. And I got a name for his tombstone. Alabaster Old too. That's a fellow I met up in, uh, up in the Dakotas. I didn't know him in about five minutes. Pow! <laughs> Put that back where you found it. How come you let me get this far? Well, I had to know if you'd spoken to anyone who might have believed your story. I told Sheriff McVeigh about it. No, I'm not worried about McVeigh believing. All right, let's get to it. Why don't we just shoot him and turn him in? Maybe there's a reward. How about that? Let's get in a reward for finding you. <laughs> Let him up. All right, let's get at it. Now, patience. Patience, that's the key to joy, Slade. We don't want any noise. A nice, quiet departure. Talk like taking a man's life means nothing to you. It doesn't. Not after I've planned for a full year to wipe out Camp Henley. And you were right about that. There won't be an army detachment within a hundred miles to stop us after tomorrow. Hold him in the chair, boys. <laughs> Guns. He can't get out of town now. Just walk softly. Come on. This ought to do it, Traeger. You get enough feed and grain to last you a month. Now, if you pay me my $30 and get on home, I'll get to mine. How do I know you put in what I ordered? I haven't cheated you yet. Well, that's always the first time. And check the wagon. I kept the store open special for you, and that's the planks I get. Send me a bill. You know I never paid you yet till I seen what you give me. Hey, hey. What do you got there? You know what I told you about buying things. I just bought some seeds, Lamb. I want to plant a garden. Flower seeds? Give them back. Go on, give them back. You think I made them money? Now get up in that wagon seat. Let's get on out of here. Mind us searching your wagon? What for? We're looking for the thief that ran out of the general store this evening. You're kind of overdoing it, ain't you? 
Mr. Corey said he didn't steal nothing. You got anything against us looking? Maddie and me got to get home. That's what I got against it. He's not in there. And you said you wanted to get home in a hurry, Lem. Lem says we've got to get home, Mr. Baines. You know how it is. Yeah, Mr. Baines and the whole town knows how it is with that high spender I married. No, no, no. It's all right. We're sorry to trouble you, ma'am. Telling me what's wrong with you. I'm always touched by a lady in trouble. She certainly got enough with that man she's married to. No need for us to add to it. Yeah, but I think he still oh, could have. The man we're after, what's he doing in a wagon? He'd be looking for a lot faster way out of town than that. Anyway, there's no problem. We're thinking wrong. He wants to get to that camp. All right, let him try. You two are going to be there ahead of him. And when he shows, Whatever you do to him, the sheriff will thank you. What about you? You getting out tonight? Right now. And how's our fine lieutenant going to take all this? Well, he hasn't got much choice, has he? Go on, get along, you two. open your mouth since we left town. You got a chill? No. You go on into bed. I'll unload the wagon. Leave it be, Lamb. It can wait. Come on in with me. Maddie. Son, nice. Maybe I'll reconsider. Let go, Lamb. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Hurt him. Don't hurt him. What are you doing in that wagon, boy? Answer me! Mister, all I want to do is buy a horse. Well, you're not able to ride. You mean you want to steal a horse if I hadn't caught you? Uh, I got money. I got money. You're that thief. When they were talking about running from the store, it's, it's him, Eddie. I'm no thief. I'm no thief. I gotta get to Camp Henley. He hasn't Help me. done you any harm, Lim. He's hurt. He can't move. You don't have to tie him. He ain't one of your sick birds, Maddie. Uh, Lim, Lim, you'll get into trouble. I know you will. Let him alone, Lim. Don't do it. He's that thief. I'll take him to town in the morning. Go on up. Did you know he was in that wagon all the time? Don't you lie. No. I'll unhitch the team. You wait up for me.
one year I've been planning this, Mr. Baines. You hired these men. That was your end of it. I come out here to give final orders and discover you've been chasing a man who got away from you at Feather Canyon. Well, I wasn't there. Morse was running now. Anyway, Toland's dead. Now you come and tell me. Someone else knows. Well, we're handling that. I just ask you to postpone the attack until we can make sure. And just when will that be? Tomorrow? The next day? Next year? What's this man look like? Well, here's a description of him. All right. I'll take out a patrol. If this Yates is anywhere close by, we'll pick him up. You say you've got two men watching the entrance? That's right. We can't change our schedule. I've arranged for half the troops to be on sick call at dawn. That's when you move in. You understand? The rest of the men will be at mess. No rifles, no sidearms. You men, move in fast. But I'll take care of the colonel. From the way you're talking, you can taste it, mister. I'll show him whether I can be more than a bootlicking lieutenant. He'll know tomorrow. I'll have an army of my own. It's 11 o'clock, Mr. Baines. You move out of here in exactly one hour. You'll be at the camp by six. I'll meet you outside. Right in with you. You men, try to look like soldiers until you get inside. Then the camp will be yours. And the territory the camp protects for hundreds of miles around. It will all be yours. We'll move in fast and clean them out fast before anyone even begins to suspect what's happening. Is that clear? Do you think you can do it? Yes, yeah. 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 do it. I'll see you at six, Mr. Baines. Just get me free here, will you? I can't. Your husband, he's gonna know you've been here when he sees that bandage. It doesn't matter. Listen to me, I gotta get to Camp Henley. Oh, don't lie to me, please. I'm trying to help you. If he hadn't have caught you, I would have let you go. Why? Oh, I don't know. I guess I know what it's like being caught. I wasn't lying to you. If I don't get to that camp, there's gonna be trouble there. What trouble? There's some men, they're gonna take it by surprise. I gotta get there. I don't believe you, but it doesn't matter. Un untie. Look, that thing's a lie. I didn't kill no one. That's a lie. What are you doing here? doing with him? You planning on having him take you away? I gave up planning a long time ago, Lim. I just couldn't let him bleed to death. I took that away from him. It's him, Lim. What are you going to do? I'm going to take him to town right now. A killer's worth money to us. Maybe he's got friends who are looking for him. 
If they catch you, they'll kill you, Nam. What do you care? I ask you a question. What do you care if I get killed? I'm just asking you not to do it alone. Maybe you do care a little. Maybe. Maybe we can still make it together someday, Nam. Just give me half a chance, Maddie. All right. You go into town. Bring out the sheriff. Bring anybody. If anybody shows before you get back, I've got this. I ain't gonna leave you alone here with that. Do it, Lem, do it. You're wasting time. Go on. <laughs> the sheriff. We use the horses from the wagon. I'll sign them up. I'm going with you. Go oh, with me. If you believe what's on that poster, I'll come here. Trust me, all of a sudden. Going with you won't be any worse than staying here, whatever you offer. And a man who's wanted doesn't figure on getting caught. I'm drying up here, mister. I'm dying. This is my chance to get away for good, and I'm getting. If you want to go with me, that's fine. But I ain't going where you think I'm going. I got to get to that camp. Do you want me to change my mind? I'm just saying I'm going with her without you. No promises. No promises. I guess we both better wish each other luck, huh? You mean it. You're going to Camp Henley no matter what, aren't you? Yeah. Not about that story you made up, about men taking the place of soldiers who aren't soldiers. I didn't make that up. I'm real grateful to you for all you've done for me, Maddie. <laughs> He couldn't beat us. We've been here two hours. Maybe he ain't gonna make it. Ha! I'd like to get him, though, just for luck. The same men as last night? Yeah. Looks like we'll be traveling together after all. Those men down there are part of the gang. They're coming in the army wagons. Look, this whole territory is going to be robbed and stripped, and the people that ain't killed are going to be looking to the army for help. Only there ain't going to be any army. Now, you got to help me, Maddie. They're only looking for me. You can make it to the camp. I'm not going to any camp. I don't believe you. No one believes it. I didn't believe it either at first. What wild thing are you up to? We can get away. If running away from the man you're married to means more than hundreds of people in this area. You better start running. <laughs>
someday a man just gets cheated. Take over, Sergeant. You come with me, Mr. Trevor. Well, he ain't dead. What did you do with my wife? I let her go. Let's get him on a horse. What's the trouble, Sheriff? Oh, no trouble anymore, Lieutenant. He and some of his friends killed three of my men. We'll get them. Lieutenant, I gotta talk to you. You got nothing to talk about. Some foolish notion about taking over your camp. I'd like to see anybody try to take over your camp. So would I. You'll take the detachment in, Mr. Trevor. If the Colonel should ask about me, tell him I'm meeting the replacement wagons. The Colonel said for you to return with the men, sir. There was no need to meet up with the replacements. I don't care what the Colonel said. I'm giving you an order, Mr. Trevor. Yes, sir. there in about a minute. Everything all right? Some men coming. Two directions. Oh, that's all right. You just keep driving. Sheriff's got Yates. Everything's on time. Get those horses going. Let's go home. Now drop your guns and come out with your arms raised. Makes a move, this Gatling gun will blast you to kingdom come. I thought you and Baines had it sewed up. I put them under arrest, all of them. Uh, such a diabolical but wonderful scheme to go wrong, Colonel. It was all ours. We have taken over the whole territory. You might have it that. Oh, yes, we would. Except for him. What a miserable barber he'd have made. He'd have never learned how to use his razor effectively. <laughs> Take him out. What, are you gonna lynch me, Sheriff? Not even give me a trial? Never lynched a man yet. Come on. Here's your hat. Your gun. 
My hand. We caught every one of them, Mr. Yates. I can't express my appreciation enough. And you can thank the lady here for delivering your message. Um, anything I can do to make it up to you? No. You coming, Maddie? I'll be right there, Len. I know what this cost you. Mr. Yates, I understand you're looking for cattle. That's what you said he told you, wasn't it? That's right. Well, we've got 60 head of government stock, more than we need. I've been ordered to dispose of it. I'll be pleased to accommodate you. Apparently, you got yourself a buyer. I'd sure like to know what happened, though. Glad to tell you, over a drink. I'd say you look like you need one. Yeah, you got that right. See you later, Sheriff. Sure. So long.